Okay. So, uh, right, Reverend Keith, this is Fernando. Uh, I think uh, we have a mixed audience here. Some of some of us here are Christians, some of us are Buddhist, and there are uh, people from other religions as well. So it would be very important for us to know about the, the right way of um, um, addressing you. So I believe the, the proper and best for you would be the Lord Bishop of Kurnagala, the Right Reverend Keith Disiri Fernando. Is that correct? Yeah, that is the formal address. Just call me Keith that you know. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> because, um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm always calling you Keith because you are a, a very good friend of mine from our very young days. Um, as, a, as another introduction, I would like uh, you to give us the difference between now, you know, lots of us know about Cardinal Malcolm Bundy. And some people who are not Christians are getting a little bit confused about who is Cardinal Ranjit and who are you and what is the difference between these uh, uh, different sects. Could you just give a rough idea of what this is, please? Uh, you need to give another lecture to explain this, but I'll give a rough idea. Uh, uh, I mean, Anglican Church uh, is integrally connected to, uh, uh, I mean, Church of England. We are not Church of England. Now, when you get the uh, Roman Catholic Church, wherever you go, you are called Roman Catholic, but... Sorry, Bishop, you're muted. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if you go to Australia, you're called Church of Australia, Church of Nigeria. Uh, Anglican Church uh, is in about 170 countries. We have about 42 provinces, uh, but we work very closely with the Roman Catholic Church. Uh, if you give a, a kind of a nod that uh, 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 the background in nut, nutshell form, no church grew up in various places. And know that uh, even in England, know that uh, you have early traces in the second, third centuries called Celtic church because Celts were there. And then 597 actually, the Roman Catholic church was introduced to England. But with the Reformation, know that uh, they declared their independence. Uh, unlike the other Protestant churches, you know, that Anglican church kept the, all the traditions. But uh, when you come to you know, today, we would say that, uh, I mean, we are a church you know, that uh, uh, who has maintained you know, elegance with simplicity. Anglican church is you now called simple and elegant. Uh, uh, we don't just go by uh, uh, the scripture. We say three pillars of the Anglican church, scripture, tradition, reason. And know that uh, therefore know that uh, Anglican Church is also called the Bridge Church. It is in between all the denominations because we have accommodated all the traditions within the Anglican Church. That is the richness of the Anglican Church. And uh, then we are uh, managed by four instruments of the Anglican Church. Now, Archbishop of Canterbury is called Primus Inter Paris in Latin, first among equals. And then you have ACC, Anglican Consultative Council. And then Primate Conference, there are 42 primates throughout the world. And then the Lambeth Conference, which meets once in 10 years. We are supposed to meet this year. We were to meet in 2018 and no, 20, now it's 22. Uh, if everything goes well, we'll be there. And I have been coming and going because of my research and things like that. Uh, at the moment, uh, I function as the presiding bishop as well. Anglican Church in Sri Lanka is quite small. We have only two dioceses, but then no. Under the uh, Archbishop of Canterbury, know that who we call Metropolitan for our church, know that uh, I function as the presiding bishop as well. That's the kind of a know that uh, a simple know that uh, way of explaining the Anglican Church. Thank you very much, uh, Bishop Katie. So uh, the the church, uh, the Anglican Church in uh, Sri Lanka is called Church of Ceylon, or is it Church of Sri Lanka now? Church of Ceylon, yeah, because that is the Act of Parliament. We are an Act of Parliament, yeah. And right. uh, unlike the other religions, know that uh, because of the, the past background, even Bishop is on a special Act of Parliament. Bishop is a body corporate, yeah. Uh, and uh, as Bishop, I can't know that uh, just I know Kirti Sri I had to put across Bishop Kirti Kuru Nagal. And also, I can't say I, the Bishop of Kuru Nagal, and the we, the Bishop of Kuru Nagal. Even I can't put no, officially uh, my human nature, I had to put my episcopal nature. 50 years of my episcopate, that kind of thing, because the bishop is a body corporate, he can hold properties and things like that. That is apart from the religious side. Yeah. I see. Thank you. 
And uh, the Anglican Church or the, the Church of Ceylon has two dioceses, the Colombo and the Kurunagala Diocese. And you're the bishop of the Kurunagala Diocese. Yeah, yeah. At the, at the same time, no, that I function as the presiding bishop as well. The General Assembly is chaired by the presiding bishop. And uh, now, presiding bishop has to handle international, national, and Church of Ceylon matters. But diocesan matters are handled by the diocesan. I see. Okay. Now, uh, when I met you last time, you showed me the cross you're wearing. Can we see your cross, please? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you'll be interested in this, I'm sure, yeah. Now, uh, now all, the, all, yeah, all the dioceses have a unique cross. Now, this is an historian cross. Uh, this was unearthed in Andhra in 1912. Uh, belongs to 6th century. Uh, this would have come from Persia, modern Iran. No, that Persian kingdom was much bigger than Iran. Uh, now this shape, we don't know who designed this. You get similar crosses in China uh, and you know, that uh, India and other places. But here, you know that you get you know, these you no know, pearls, twelve pearls to denote the twelve disciples of Jesus kept on a lotus flower. These steps are the steps to perfection. Uh, I mean, we have uh, taken this cross as a Asian cross, but then you know, when I was consecrated, you are given a cross, you no know, that. Uh, called pectoral cross, and then I decide you now that in a particular way, now uh, top part, you get a, a piece of palmera wood from Jaffna. This is a piece of coconut wood from Matara. This is a piece of tea wood from the Central Hills, and this is a piece of Jack. Because the, the meaning is you have to bring all the cultures of Sri Lanka to the sacrificial love, like Jesus did. I mean, uh, that is the message uh, that I want to convey through this cross, as I wear this cross. Thank you very much for that. <clears throat> so, um, you and I, we were born in Moratua, and I believe you went to Prince of Wales College, the right? Yeah, yeah, correct, yeah. And then we met uh, as A-level students, and both of us were uh, doing a levels together. And I just wanted to find out when did you thought of uh, more, uh, becoming a priest at what stage? Because from my memory, um, when, when I was with you going for tuition classes, you never had any idea like that. Correct, correct, correct. Yeah. Uh, yes, do And actually, what happened was I never told anybody. Uh, I was born. Uh, more than eight years after my uh, uh, brother, uh, three boys and one girl in the family, then my parents know that uh, told me that uh, my birth was a miraculous birth and know that we have dedicated you if you wish uh, to become a clergy person and to serve others. But I never liked the idea. I used to tease my mother and say it was not a miracle, it was an accident that I was born. And, uh, but then uh, I wanted to become an engineer. Uh, I mean, uh, with Ruan, no, we did A levels together. I did double math, and then I started doing a London degree, uh, mechanical engineering degree. Uh, I worked for a company, uh, one of the uh, uh, groups of car mart, uh, uh, factory called Amico, company called Amico, where they make cans and tubes and things like that. Then, uh, when I was working on my charter, uh, charter engineering, no, that uh, I was working with about 200 people. I was, uh, I mean, no, that uh, in my early 20s. I was involved in you know, that, uh, I mean, solving uh, the issues of people from Maradana, Punjiborel, all those areas. At the same time, I was in a classical choir conducted by Riley Godfrey. I used to do classical singing. And then a uh, number of my friends you know that uh, got involved in politics. Then uh, there were invitations for me to get involved in politics and also uh, have a career in singing. But then I, I wanted to live in a kind of a you know, bigger world, I mean, you know, to expand my boundaries. That's where, again, I thought of you know, that ministry, you know, that my father and mother had been telling. And you know, finally, uh, when I was about 19, 20, they gave up the idea. I never told my friends that I didn't want to become a clergy person. That was you know, that, uh, not part of my you know, that agenda or career. But then uh, I kept on thinking on this for about you know, four or five years. And I thought you know, that uh, to serve others, this is the you know, that. Uh, best way. Therefore, my so-called calling is not a very a spiritual one. It's a very social one. I wanted to know that, expand my boundaries on my faith. That's how you know, I ended up doing all this research as well. I mean, know that I always say I do sociological research with theological implications. 
and know that i was in the academic field at one stage i was the principal of deaf school then know that the principal of st thomas bandarla twice uh, i was the principal of a seminary i was a chaplain of elwood uh, till i do some work for the department of education sex books and things like that and uh, but finally 2018 uh, uh, i became the bishop of kurunagala and uh, that's how i uh, got into this now that therefore it was not a very emotional thing uh, i have been struggling now that yeah with the future of now that my whole life that's how i became a clergy person even the very way i went and explained to my bishop he said no you are called in different ways uh, and now that they accepted my call uh, that's how uh, i ended up uh, becoming clergy person that's why ruan and they my little surprise yeah because i was not telling i'm going to be a priest and i was not a very holy holy person in that way uh, but uh, my main vision was to expand my boundaries even today i'm involved in now that all the Uh, dialogue with religion and even with ideologies like communism and you know, all that kind of thing and uh, this diocese not that has started this about 70 years ago the whole world not doing that kind of dialogue with various ideologies and not the whole process of indianization using not the music of not people that kind of thing and uh, who are knows about that that how not that uh, uh, i offered myself for not that ministry to be done Thank you very much, Sir and Keithy, for that introduction. So, <coughs> I believe you joined the uh, Theological College in 1985. That's right. Yeah. Right. So, and then you got a bachelor bachelor of theology and bachelor of uh, divinity degrees from University of Sarampo. Sarampo, yeah, in Calcutta, yeah. In Calcutta. So, did you uh, do your Uh, basic training in Pilimatalava Theological College or yeah, in Calcutta? Yeah. No, Pilimatalava. If you are qualified, no, that uh, you are given a formation of four years. Uh, parallelly, you can do your Bachelor of Theology, and then after that, I was registered for Bachelor of Divinity as a kind of a not direct student. Uh, uh, bachelor of Theology was done in single medium. Bachelor of Divinity in English medium. Yeah. Okay. and then um you became uh, a lecturer and acting principal in theological college as well and in 2001 you uh, left the country and came to uk and attached yourself to the kent university is that correct yeah in between also i did another mphil from uh, university of rohuna hmm. hmm and that is also sociological study yeah, called integrity and integration and uh, with that i came to uh, kent university of kent at canterbury to do another postgraduate study yeah, another so your book you have written is uh, from that experience exactly from that experience yeah right so it's not epic research yeah okay and where did you where did you i mean i think uh, the clip next is going to give further details about that research so let's not talk about that but uh, let's let's uh, touch on um, you mentioned that you became a lecturer in buddhism in various places and you have studied buddhism as well so could you let us know a little bit about that aspect please yeah for the first degree i did uh, buddhism in singhala from a scholarly monk called bulmulle sumana ratana and also i had many exposures to no buddhist institutions and then uh, actually uh, uh, they say that is you know that uh, uh, most elaborate bachelor's degree actually bd bachelor of divinity although it is called bachelor it is a master's course actually four years after uh, bachelor's you do another three to four years to get that therefore uh, i mean there is a kind of a humor to say the most recognized bachelor's degree in the world because you, to get that you have to study so great years <laughs> actually uh, strictly speaking it is a it is a post graduate study uh, not a bachelor's degree although it is called that's why bd is so recognized you know that as a, as a uh, kind of a christian you know if you have bd you know like you have a phd like you know, because to get that you have to study for about 7 uh, uh, to 8 years and there i did uh, uh, special studies in buddhism for that bd from calcutta in english medium with all the you know that uh, exegetical studies of dhammapada and know that uh, detailed studies and also with international buddhism like gandhara school of arts and how know that uh, aesthetic aspects of the print buddhism and buddhism in other countries and things like that and then again know that uh, while doing my studies at tohoni university again know that i was exposed to you know buddhist activities i have been teaching uh, buddhism at uh, bachelor's and postgraduate level know that uh, for our uh, persons know that 
we have a tradition at Tilimatala when you study Buddhism for the first time, we get a, a Buddhist monk or person who believes in that religion to read. I mean, not that to teach. But later, detailed studies we get involved. And uh, even in England, no, I was involved in all that all the Buddhist temples. And no, uh, I mean, in England, I did the empirical side of Buddhism more than the doctrinal side. Because not the sociological, not that models and things like that. Yeah. And uh, even in Kurunagar, I am fully involved in all those activities uh, in all the temples. And also, our bishops have uh, contributed a lot to temples. Now, during the colonial era, Bishop Lagdas has given libraries and no, they have been enriching all the cultural activities in Buddhist temples. We have a excellent relationship you now with Buddhist temples, not just the, you know, that ceremonial superficial level, we are in and out. Buddhist monks are in and out of my uh, church and we are in and out of Buddhist temples. You no know, very uh, in-depth you know, relationship uh, with all the difficult issues and things. Thank you very much for that. And uh, after that, I think uh, you rose to the level of Bishop of Kurunagala. And there's so many, uh, I'm just in your link in page, which gives a whole uh, description of all the things you have done, uh, including being the principal of the blind school. Uh, and I see that you have been involved in so much of social activities as well. So the question I'm going to ask is now, um, when we when we um, address a Buddhist priest, we call them puja somebody, right? Whereas when we address you, we will say puja ka. So the the implication is that puja is in English we call it venerable, whereas puja ka is you're basically uh, doing a service to the general population. Is that the correct interpretation of your role, or am I wrong in that? Actually, those terms are very vague, Ruan, because now even, even now, when I was archdeacon as well, Bishop Deputy in Norelia, now all the uh, archdeacons are called venerable in our tradition. Now, different traditions have different, now that kind of titles. Yeah, but I think uh, it is a theological perspective, uh, more than the title. Now, uh, uh, as clergy persons, no, yes, we are respected by people. But Jesus said you have to serve one another, isn't it? Now, he, he, he turned the world upside down, no. Uh, in his background, uh, just like in our background, uh, disciples wash the feet, not that of the master, but Jesus was the feet of his disciples. Therefore, even uh, the first, first public act done by a bishop is no washing of the feet in, in our tradition. I mean, not that uh, in our diocese. Even in Kalamu, they do that, yeah. Because Jesus said, no, that if you want to be the master, you have to serve the others. Uh, therefore, no, that, uh, yes, uh, uh, you get you know, the respect and veneration from other people, but at the same time, you know, that uh, the philosophy of Jesus you know, was to live for the other people. You now, in our diocese, we have taken the metaphor of the seed, because Jesus said, like a seed, you have to die and grow. If you don't die, you know, if a seed doesn't die, it can't grow. That's why I got you know, that uh, this even cross from the you know, that, uh, world of trees. We are called to not die in the society. I mean, not the creative death, so that you grow and not bear fruit. Uh, I think uh, that is the you know that the, the Christian you not know, the philosophical you no know, theology of philosophy you not know, that of the background. That's why we say we are to serve others, not to be served. Thank you very much for that explanation. So now it is time to get into your main research. So you have very kindly asked me to show about a 20 minute uh, video clip. So let's go to, uh, go, to, go to that. And after that, we will be opening for questions. Okay? Yeah, Ruan, that is yes. in Singhala because that is done very well. That was done by a TV channel. Uh, I mean, if they want to ask questions in English, they are very welcome. No issue at all. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks. Am I sharing the screen now? Uh, sorry, not yet. Yeah. Can everybody see the screen? Yeah, that's fine. Ron. Thank you. सुंदर लंदन ये टे यान्नाई में सुधाना बैंडे ये सब बैंडे में ग्रंथियाँ हरा सुंदर नल लंदन नगरे 
ආගම් අතර තිබෙන විවිධත්වය ඇතුලේ අපි බොහෝ දෙය කතා කරන්නට යනවා මේ බොහෝ දෙය කතා කරන්නට යන්නේ ඊටමත්ම අමාරු වටිනා නිර්මාණයක් විශාල කාලයක් වැය කරලා විශාල වෙහෙසක් මහන්සියක් වැය කරලා මුළු ලන්ඩනේ සෑම වීදියක් වීදියක් ගානේ ඇවිද ඒ ලබා ගත්තා වූ තොරතුරු වලින් වටිනා ග්‍රන්ථයක් නිර්මාණය කරලා තිබෙනවා මේ ග්‍රන්ථය නිර්මාණය කරලා තියෙන්නේ කීර්ති සිරි ප්‍රනාන්දු පීතුමා පීතුමනි ඉතාදරින් ගෞරවයෙන් ඔබතුමාව මේ වැඩසටහන පිළිගන්න ආයුෂ බොහෝ වේවා කියලා ප්‍රාර්ථනා කරන්නත් කැමති එතුමා අද වර්තමානයේ ලංකා දීව සභාව කුර්නෑගල දියෝකීසියේ රදගුරු තුමා හැටියට කටයුතු කරනවා මේ සියලු දේට වඩා ජේසස් ක්‍රිස්තස් වහන්සේගේ ආදරය තුල ජීවත් වෙන ඒ ආදරයේ උතුරා යන සෙනෙහාසකින් හැම කෙනෙක් සමගම එක හා සමාන බෙදා ගන්නට එතුමා දෙවියන් වහන්සේගෙන් ආශිර්වාද ලත් මනුෂ්‍යයෙක් ඒ ජීවිතය හරි සුන්දරයි විවිධ තොරතුරු අපි අහනකොට නමුත් ඒ දේවල් විඳිනකොට කොයි තරම් අමාරු වුණාද යන කාරණාව දන්නේ එතුමා සහ ඒ ආදරණීය පවුල ඒ වගේම දෙවි පියාණන් වහන්සේ පීතුමනි අවසරයි මේ අඩ හෝරාවක කාලය ඔබ තුමා සමග ගත කරන්න දැන් මේ ග්‍රන්ථයේ සුළමුල්ල සොයා බලන්න ලන්ඩනේ ඔබ තුමා සිටියා වූ ඉතිහාසයට අපිට ගමන් කරන්න සිද්ධ වෙනවා කොහොමද පීතුමනි මේ ග්‍රන්ථය නිර්මාණය වෙන්නේ ඔව් ඇත්තම මම ඒ කාලේ ජීවත් වුණේ කෙන්ට් වල කැන්ටබරි වල තිබෙන ආ නගරයක් විට්ස්ටබල් කියලා දෙයක් කියන්න අමාරුයි විට්ස්ටබල් එහෙත මම ජීවත් වුණේ එතකොට කෙන්ට් සරසවිය තමයි මම මේ සමීක්ෂණය කරේ එතකොට ඒකේ මගේ සමීක්ෂණ ඔක්කොම ගවේෂණය කරේ ලන්ඩන් නුවර තමයි ලන්ඩන් නුවර කොන් පහක ඇත්තම පහ ගැන කිව්වොත් එහෙම ඉල්ෆඩ් කියලා දැනක රෙඩ් බ්‍රිජ් කියලා ඒ නගරේ එතකොට ගොඩාක් සංක්‍රමිත කියන්නේ ඊට නගරයක් තමයි පැත්තක් තමයි අපි කියනවා නැගෙන හිර ලන්ඩනේ කියලා ඊස්ට් හැම් කියලා ප්ලෙස්ටෝ කියලා ප්ලාස්ටෝ කියලාත් කියනවා ඒ ප්‍රදේශයේ එතකොට කිංග්ස්බරි කියන්නා වූ ප්‍රදේශයේ ඉතාමත් ජනාකීර්ණ නගරයක් චෙසෙක් කියන්නා වූ නගරේ ලන්ඩන් විහාරයේ තියෙන එහෙ තමයි අනිත් එක තමයි සරේ ක්‍රොයිඩන් කියන්නා වූ ඒ ලන්ඩනේ ප්‍රදේශ පහක් ඇත්තෙ මට ඕන උනේ එක ප්‍රදේශයක් කරන්න නමුත් මගේ මහාචාර්යවරුන්ගෙන් බේරෙන්න හම්බුන්නේ ඔබ තුමා හොඳට දැනුමත් තියෙනවා බෞද්ධ ආගමක් දන්නවා කියලා මට වෙනම මේකට මුදල් ප්‍රතිපාදනල් දැස්ති කරලා ඔය ලන්ඩනේ හැම තැන්ටම ඇරියා මම ටිකක් බයෝනිසල් යන්නේ නමුත් මට ඒකෙන් ලොකු අත්දැකීමක් ආවා ඔය මගේ ඔය වගේ ආ වැස්සේයි හිමෙයි අයිසුයි ඔක්කොම ගොඩේ ගිහිල්ලා නේද ආ කාර් වලයි වෑන් වලයි කෝච්චි වලයි ඔක්කොම වලින් ගිහිල්ලා මම හිතන්නේ අවුරුදු පහක් තිස්සේ मेतनिमा ඔය ඇත්තම දැන් මෙතනදී මම දැන් අවසානයේදී සමීක්ෂණයට තෝර ගත්තේ සිංහල අය බෞද්ධ සහ ක්‍රිස්තියානි ඇත්ත මම කරේ ලොකු පරාසයක සමීක්ෂණයක් ඒ කියන්නේ මම ඕකට ඉස්සල්ලා ලිව්වා රචනා ගොඩාක් පකිස්තානේ අය ගැන ඉන්දියානු අය ගැන ඒ වගේ ගොඩාක් ලිව්වා නමුත් අවසානයේදී මේ ලොකු නිබන්ධනය කරන්න මම තෝර ගත්ත කේස් ස්ටඩි කියලා කියනවනේ අපිට කිට්ටු එකනේ නේද මට ගොඩක් කිව්වා මුස්ලිම් අය ගැන කරන්න කියලා ඒක විශේෂ පකිස්තානේ නැත්තම් බංගලාදේශයේ मट गुड मे तिबुना पीड़ने मम लंका अक्रो मेक तोर इतना मेकिंग अत्य महदीन न्याय कटाव इतर मेक मम तोर लंका एक जाती कटा ताग दिखाई संक्रमण कोहमद मौराटे विदेश अणुगत वेला तीन मेक गेमर अद्यन विशेष समाज विद्या पदनाकर अद्यन यानी लंका එතකොට ඒගොල්ලෝ හිතනවා එන්න හැට 21 වෙනි සත වර්ෂයේ එනකොට වෙන්නේ ආගම් නැති වෙලා යනවා. එතකොට විද්‍යාඥයෝ ආගමේ තන ගන්නවා. නමුත් මිනිස්සුයා හැඟීම් බලා ඉන්නේ නේද? මිනිස්සුයාට හැඟීම් තියෙනවා නේද? එතකොට ඒකත් එක්ක ඒ සංක්‍රමණයන් එක්ක ආගම් වල තිබෙන ආ වූ ඒ භූගෝලයේ මනෝවිද්‍යාව, දර්ශන විද්‍යාව ඔක්කොම 
ලොකු පරිවර්තනයක් වෙනවා දැන් මේක ගැන අධ්‍යන අඩුයි පිටට වල වුණා දැන් විශේෂයෙන්ම මම ඔක් කරලා තියෙන්නේ ජාතිය සහ ආගම් පදනම් කරගන්න දැන් ඒගොල්ලෝගේ සංක්‍රමණයක් වුණාම මෞරටින් විදේශ රටකට එතකොට ඒගොල්ලෝ එතනදී අනන්‍යතාවයක් ඇති කරගන්න ඕනේ දැන් ලංකාවේ නම් අනන්‍යතාවයට තියෙනවනේ එතකොට අනන්‍යතාව නිර්මාණය කරගන්න ඕනේ එතකොට ඒක නිර්මාණය කරනකොට ඒගොල්ලෝ ජාතිය සහ ආගම මේකට උපයෝග කරගන්න ඕනේ ඊළඟට ඒගොල්ලෝ ඒ කරනකොට ගෙන ඒ තැම්පත් වෙන්න සමරක් කරලාට පුද්ගලිකව ජාතිකව ආගමිකව නැත්නම් වෘත්තීය වශයෙන් එතකොට ඒකෙදී ඒ රටේ තියෙන කාරණ මව් රට්ට බලපාන්න කොහොමද මව් රටේ කාරණ ඒ රට්ට බලපාන්න කොහොමද එතකොට පරම්පරා වලට වෙන්නේ මොකද්ද එතකොට ඒගොල්ලන්ගේ දර්ශනය ඒගොල්ලන්ගේ තියෙන සිතුම් පැතුම් කොහොමද ඒ රට්ට අනුව ප්‍රති නිර්මාණ වෙලා වෙනස් වෙන්නේ අනේ ඒ වගේ විග්‍රහයක් තමයි ඔක තිබෙන්නේ ඔව් පිටුමනි දැන් විවිධ මාතුකාවන් රාශියක් මේ ග්‍රන්ථයේ දකින්න ලැබෙනවා अब तो प्रधान वाशन मे आरंभ कर लती प्रधान आगमिक पशुबीम गए कथा कर लाने विविध अत्यक्ति वन प्रधान पशुबीम कि अब तो मे कथा आरंभ कर प्रधान पशुबीम लाने अमेरिका समाज विद्या मनो विद्या दर्शन विद्या मानव शास्त्र आगम की गियाटो संस्कृति जातीजन की पल्ली पंसल को मनुष्य मुस्लिम इस्मा तो इतना मेक वर्ल्ड ट्रेड सेंटर क्या हुआ मेक लुकू प्रश्न हाँ लुकू मात्र का हाँ ये पशु भी मैं तो मैं मम्मी को सिद्ध करा इतना एक ही विशेष में जाति आगम एक इतना रिलीजियस ऐडेंटिटी के जाति आगम सहसांगजने तुले लोके कोच्चर पालने वाले लोके कोच्चर नहीं बोलवा नपुर महात्मा गांधी विमुक्त उत्साह වැඩියෙම්ම ජාති ගානක් ඉන්න වැඩියෙම්ම ආගම් ගානක් තියෙන නගරේම අඳවර ගන්නේ ලන්ඩන් නුවර. ඔබතුමා දන්නවද දැන් ලන්ඩන් නුවර භාෂ ගියක් විතර කතා කරනවද කියන්නේ ලන්ඩන් නුවර අයත් දන්නේ නැහැ. භාෂ 400ක් විතර කතා කරනවා. මොකද ඒක ආ ලෝකෙන් හතර දෙනෙක් පාලය කරපු නේද? අර කියන්නේ හබ් එක කියලා මූලස්ථානයේ වෙන්නේ එක නේද? ඒතර ඒක තමයි ඒක දැක ඒ හැම දෙයක්ම තිබෙනවා. ඒක තමයි මම තෝර ගන්නේ මේක කරන්න ටිකක් අමාරු කාර්යයක්. මට ඕන වෙන්නේ ඇත්තම මම එහෙට යන්නේ එක තැනක කරන්න. නමුත් මාව යොමු කරනවා තැන් පහකට ලන්ඩන් වල මේක කරන්න කියලා. ඉතින් මම හිතන්නේ ඒක තුලින් යම් ප්‍රතිඵලයක් ලැබිලා තියෙනවා. स्कूल <laughs> मगे के तिबुना आगाम ज्ञान तिबुना दर्शनवादे तिबुना मनोविद्या तिबुना पुरा विद्या मट गुना यो महाचार दोलो कि अरेहमद ये विदेशी रटे कारण मऊराट बल पार देखो ऐन मऊराटे कारण को विदेश बल पारने इतकोटे दपीट एगोलो अर्थकथने वेनवागोलोन तेरुंगा नेगोलो मऊराटे सांकाल पड़ी इको तेरो जैसी एक्सपीरियंस पोतली वेल है ऐगोलो मेरा टे आगम आधा पुक्रमे है इतना दी ऐगोलो आप इकड़ के ना मैं मामा रे लोगों मैं क्या बोलूं दार्मिया काय परा प्रतिनिर्माण करा इकड़ के ना हैंस मॉल के ने के ना इकड़ के ना बाउंड्री मेंटेनेंस चेंज हैंडलिंग के लेकर देंग आपे सीमा वाल वे नस्तुना में आपे यानु अजस्वेन्ना तोना आप यालु प्रदेश ऐड किया हमें मने देंगे एक महापारिमाने सिद्ध है ना वैन राठक कट गया हम है बेक सिद्ध है ने अरे माउर राठक टा अनुलोम और प्रतिलोम हो एक तमें मांगो तेरे को उत्साह कर देने विक्रह करने पितू मने आप या तुमने परिचय दे आप या वेदा नियम करो तो तुम्हारा लंदन नोवर पे हिट आती बे ना � 
කරලා තිබෙනවා කොහොමද මේ පරිච්ඡේදයේ මේ ග්‍රන්ථයට එකතු කරන්න හේතුව ඔව් ඇත්තෙන්ම දැන් ඔබතුම හොඳ ප්‍රශ්නයක් කියවා කොහොමද අල තිබුණ නැහැ මගේ මුල් යෝජනාව නමුත් මට මාචාර්යවරු ඔක බල කරලා දාන්න කියලායි හොඳ විදිහට මොකද ඒගොල්ලෝ කිව්වේ දැන් මෞද්ධ මම බෞද්ධ දර්ශනේ උගන්වනවා විශේෂයෙන්ම කලකටා විශ්වවිද්‍යාලය මම ආචාර්ය කිට වැඩ කරනවා ඒක ඒගොල්ලෝ කිව්වේ ඔබතුම සිංහල දන්නවා බෞද්ධ දර්ශනේ දන්නවා එතකොට මේක මගේ සමීක්ෂණයටත් වඩා එන්න හට කරන සමීක්ෂණ වලට අත්පොතක් වෙනවා ඒකින්ද මේක කරන්න කියලා ඒකටත් මට ප්‍රතිපාදන හදලා දුන්නා දැන් එතන දැන් ලංකාවේ අය පටන් ගත්ත බෞද්ධ විහාර පහක් තියෙනවා ඒ අර මහා ලන්ඩන් නුවර ග්‍රේටර් ලන්ඩන් කියන එක මැද්ද තියෙනවා පොඩි එක ඒකේ හැබැයි දැන් තාම සිංහල අය දැන් දෙමළ අය වෙනම පල්ලි පටන් ගන්න තියෙනවා සිංහල අය කිතුනුව වෙනම පල්ලි පටන් ගන්න නැහැ හැබැයි ආයතන තුනක් මං හඳුනගත්තා එකක් නිදහස් සභාවක් ඒගොල්ලෝ ස්කෝල් වල එහෙම හම්බ වෙනවා දැන් මට ආරංචි එකට ටිකක් ටිකක් පල්ලියක් වගේ වෙන්න යනවා අනිත් එක හැම කිතුනුවෙක්ම ඉන්න නිකාය බේදයක් නැතුව තියෙන ආයතනයක් තිබෙනවා ක්‍රිස්තියානි ඇසෝසියේෂන් එක අනිත් එක කතෝලිකයන්ගේ එකක් හැබැයි ඒගොල්ලෝ එහෙ තියෙන පල්ලිය නමස්කාර කරනවා හැබැයි ඒ පල්ලිය ඉල්ලගෙන ඒගොල්ලෝ ඒගොල්ලන් කටයුතු කරගන්න වෙනම් පල්ලි හදලා නැහැ හැබැයි දෙමළ අය වෙනම් පල්ලි පටන් ගන්න තියෙනවා ඉන්දියාවෙන් ආ පොය මලයාලි කට්ටිය හින්දි කට්ටිය වෙනම් පල්ලි පටන් ගන්න තියෙනවා නමුත් අපේ අය එහෙම කරලා නැහැ තාම ඉතින් ඒක මම හිතන්නේ විශේෂ අංගයක් හිතන නමුත් බෞද්ධයෝ වෙනම පන්සල් පටන් ගන්න තියෙනවා හැබැයි මේ පහට අමතරව තව ගොඩක් විහාර තියෙනවා ලන්ඩන් වල වෙන රටවලින් පටන් ගත්ත අමරවතී වගේ ඒවා ඒක ඒක සම්ප්‍රදායෙන් ගියා පීතුමනි තර තරමක් වර්තමානයේ බොහෝ දුරට සාකච්ඡාවට භාජනය වෙන ප්‍රශ්නයක් මේ ග්‍රන්ථයේ හරහා ඔබතුමාගෙන් අසන්නට කැමති මම හිතනවා අපේ ප්‍රේක්ෂක ප්‍රේක්ෂිකාවන් ඊටමත්ම බුද්ධිමත්ව මේ ප්‍රශ්නයේ විනිවිධ භාවයකින් යුතුව දකීවි කියලා පීතුමනි අද වර්තමානයේ ශ්‍රී ලංකාව අපි ආගමීකරණයේ කිතුණු දහමට තවත් ආගමක සිටින කෙනෙක්ව බඳවා ගැනීම පිළිබඳව බොහෝ කතා බහ කරන කාරණාවක් බවට පත් වෙලා තිබෙන යුගයක ඔබතුමා ලන්ඩනේ සිටිය කෙනෙක් ඒ රටේ මිනිස්සු සුදු ජාතිකයෝන්ගේ අකමැත්තක් නැද්ද තවත් කෙනෙක් කියලා බෞද්ධ සිද්ධස්ථානයක් නිර්මාණය කිරීම හෝ තවත් කෝවිලක් නිර්මාණය කිරීම තවත් ස්ථානයක් නිර්මාණය කිරීමට විරුද්ධත්වයක් ලන්ඩන් නුවර ඉන්න බලධාරීන්ගේ එහෙම වෙනසක් නැද්ද ඒ රටේ මිනිස්සුන්ගේ ඒගොල්ලන්ගේ විරුද්ධත්ව රුචිකත්වයක් තියෙනවා ඒක හදනවට මොකද ඒගොල්ල බලන්නේ ඒකෙන් ඒගොල්ලන්ගේ සීමා පුළුල් වෙනවනේ හැබැයි ඒගොල්ලන්ගේ මෙහෙම බයක් තියෙනවා දැන් විශේෂයෙන්ම බෞද්ධ අය ගැන එහෙම ලොකු බයක් නැහැ මුස්ලිම් අය ගැන පොඩි බයක් තියෙනවා ඇති වෙලා තියෙන තත්වේ හින්දා ඒ කියන්නේ මේක ප්‍රතික්ෂේප කිරීම අන්නේ මේ ඇත්තම මම ඒ සම්බන්ධ ගොඩක් කටයුතු කරා විශේෂ යුදෙව්වන් සම්බන්ධව මුස්ලිම් අය සම්බන්ධව මොකද මගේ විශ්වවිද්‍යාලය හරහා ප්‍රශ්න ඇති වෙනකොට ඒ නඩුවලදී බව අපි ක්‍රියා කරා නමුත් දැන් ඒගොල්ලෝ දන්නවා බෞද්ධයෝ ඒ වගේ නෙමිනේ ගොඩක් වෙලාවට ඉතින් ඒ වගේ ඒගොල්ලන්ට බයක් ඇති වෙන්නේ අර සමාජ තර්ජනයක් කවත් විතරයි දර්ශනයක් කැට ඒගොල්ලෝ ආසයි ගොඩක් දර්ශන තියෙන එකට ඉතින් වෙන එකක් තියා දැන් අපේ සමහරක් ඉන්න හාමුදුරුගොල්ලොන්ට රැජගෙන නම්බුනාම ලැබෙනවා ඒගොල්ලන්ගේ සේවයා ගේනවා ඉතින් ඒ වගේ තියෙනවා ඉතින් ඒගොල්ලෝ එහෙම බයක් ගන්න නැහැ කියන්නේ මනුස්සයෝන නිදහස් තියෙනවා අන්න ඒ දෝන ආගමක් කෝන ජාතියක් අදහන්න ඒගොල්ලෝ එක් ගන්නේ සුබවාදී දෙයක් හැටියට ඉතින් ඒගොල්ලෝ පල්ලි වලත් එහෙම දැන් මට පල්ලි වල මට සමහර කාන්තවාදී ක්‍රිස්තියානි අය පාර ගන්නවා මම පිට්ටට ගියා වැඩි වුණනේ බෞද්ධ ආගමක් ක්‍රිස්තියානි අය ගමනේ මොකද වෙලා දින මට ආරතලා ගොඩක් ලැබෙන්නේ බෞද්ධ ආගමක් ගන්නන්න තමයි ඒක ක්‍රිස්තියානි අය ගන්න කට්ටිය ගොඩක් එහෙ ඉන්නවනේ අද ඒක අපිට තියෙන ලොකු ප්‍රශ්නයක් අපේ විශේෂයෙන් ලංකාවේ තියෙන බෞද්ධ ආගම ගැන කියන්නේ ඉංග්‍රීසියෙන් කියන කට්ටිය අඩුවෙනි දැන් ඉන්නවා විශ්ව විද්‍යාලේ ඒගොල්ලෝ කතා කරන්නේ විශ්ව විද්‍යාලේ තියෙන එකනේ අර සාමාන්‍ය බුද්ධ ආගම ගැන්නේ ඉංග්‍රීසියෙන් කියන්න පුළුවන් කට්ටිය හරි අඩුයි ඉතින් ඒකින්ද මම නිතරම මම ගොඩක් වෙලා මේ Zoom මාධ්‍ය ඔස්සේ තේව කරනවා ඉතින් ඒගොල්ලන්ට විස්තර කරලා දෙන්න ඉතින් එතකොට දැන් කොහොමුණත් අපි කිතුනවන් ඉන්නේ තේ බෞද්ධ පසුබිමේනේ ඉතින් අපි කිතු දහමත් තේ බෞද්ධ ආගමෙන් ආභාෂය ලැබලා තියෙනවා එතකොට බෞද්ධ ආගමත් කිතු දහමෙන් ආභාෂය ලැබලා තියෙනවා එතකොට ඒක විදේශයකට ගියාම අපිට හොඳට පේනවා මොකද සිනා සිංහල අනන්න තාව ඉස්මතු වෙනවනේ එතකොට එහෙ සිංහල ක්‍රිස්තියානි සහ බෞද්ධ හුඟාක් එකට වැඩ කරනවා දැන් එහෙ පන්සල් හදනකොට සමහර පන්සල් හදලා තියෙන ක්‍රිස්තියානි කට්ටිය එතකොට බෞද්ධ ඇට ඒගොල්ලෝ ලොකු අර එක ජාතියක්නේ එක භාෂාවක් එක සංස්කෘතියක්නේ එතකොට ඒගොල්ලෝ නිතර එහෙ හොඳ අනන්‍යතාවයකින් ක්‍රියා කරනවා ඒ කියන්නේ කාගේ විශ්වාසය පමණයි වෙනස් වෙලා තියෙනවා වෙනස් වෙලා තියෙනවා ඔව් මේ ඔබ කල්පනා
प्रेमनीय आध्यात्मिक आरगले महोत्सव आरगले ये दे पुलुस साला विनाश कर लेता है नट बह। फिर तो मनी मैं ओन में कहने को डे इवेनी आधास्ती बना इवेनी दे इगेने गाने क्या मती दाना गाने नट क्या मती ये आदरणीय जनता वट मां क्या मती मैं वैसा टान हर हम एक रांती हनुना देने ओन डे माना रोकुलक बावट पात भेजे अब तो माँ खाता कर लेती बिना खाता कराना उत्साह दारनो ये राते ये तीन बिना तवत आगम सहा विशेष ये बाउद सहा कितनों पशु में पीले बंदों खाता कर लेती तवत विविध अत्याक पीले बंदों को माँ दो बुतों माँ के पारमार्थे में पीले बंदों खाता कराने ओ ऐसे बंदे मामा में खाता करने के ये राते पशु में तुले खाता वाके में migration की ना मात्रा migration की ने को migration की ने के मुकद्दर में इतने भी अन्य एक रो संक्रमण की होने इधर संक्रमण की अन्य आधास इकता ना पावती ना एक एक गति का इन्हें स्थिति करने तो कोटे एक को हम तो बेन्ने की ने कहते हैं मां उत्साह कराने में इतने की अन्य तो कोटे गुलांटे ना एक गैटलू ती बेन्ना वो अभियोगा कारण एक तीन अगोलां के सांस्कृतिक प्रतिनिधित्व मारने का नेता एगोले बनने ये दी अनाथ बनने वाले एगोलां डानन्नता आए क्या तो ये तो एगोले आगमाय जाते हैं पावेच्छ करना एगोलां के अनन्नता आए प्रतिनिधित्व मारने का ना एक तक में तो मैं हेट गया था पास से खैमो बीम भी तो अन्ने में अनुपलं इतने एक लंगे आगे में सीधा स्थान तो ले एक आय प्रतिनिधि माने करना इतने कोटे ये वाले धाम पास आलती भी ना सिंगल बाश आओ गाने ना वाने इधर सिंगल आउट दूध से बती भी ना मेरे को कोई स्तर गलती भी ना मामे का आउट दूध पाहा किधर करूं सामीक्षण है नहीं क्या मुझे एक विग्रह गलती ना कैटिका पोता लोग हाँ मेरे को मेरा कहते मटे आइस लाभ दें पावे वो ना मेरे को विग्रह करना ऐसे के मेरे विग्रह कराने सिंगल बाउद्ध दिया के नो ना दुविन दाने मी मेरे राठा हो मेरे क्रम भेज देगा नहीं गोल मेरे विधि अट्टा विग्रह कराने वो ना किला है मैं कहने को ऐसे मेरे किंग गोड़ा तीन ने कह देंगा पिटे गोड़ा मेरे क मैं वाके देवल लागे हैं ना इतने किता जनता तथा मामा ये लंडन नोवर मटे यान नत्ता वस्ता वधी नहीं थे ना मैं तो कुटे ये ही ना सांक्रमित क्या नहीं है विशेष शेम आप ये कनाडा ऑस्ट्रेलिया ये वाले इन्ने आगे ना तमांग ये वैध वर्ल्ड यो मुझे नो ये बोलना कोमन हाथ नो गाने ये गेटलू वाले एक रन्ना क्रिया कार्य में उल्टा मामे में सामीक्षण वाले ठेमे दे पाते ना मामे अलूट पोता क्लियर लेते ना पासे दावा से के कतार करूं मुझे वाके करूं बो में विश्वविद्यालय पत्र की प्याक दालत पोता करा में एक आर्ना संबंधो ओ फिर तो मनी आपे या बहुत वेला वाले में आगमिंग के संगीन्दिया में पिली बांधे पावत्तीम बहु में यंग आपी विविध माध्य हरा दाखिए नटले बिनो माह इधर में वैनी ग्रंथ यक केवल वो नो में किने कुटे सुबह वैन में ग्रंथ एक केवा आवश्यक नहीं दी आगमी के सांगहिंदी आवा ऐटी बिनो फिर तो मनी लोक ऐटे ए कारण आवा अत्यावश्य मोहतक स्वीलंका देशी ऐटे आगमी के सांगहिंदी आवा पिलिबंद अदा हज़ार के नेतृत्व में तुम्हारे में सिंगल बांशा में परिवार तो नहीं करा। ओ ऐसे में मगे पोत गन्ना वक्त में आप इस हेतु जनात बदुर की पद नहीं हुए। विविध पक्ष वाले वो का किये ना वाह। ऐसे में दा में वाके पोता परिवार तो नहीं करा ना में विषय के नाते हैं ना देने वाक कोड भी ना। ऐसे मांग उत्साह करना वाह। निवारे दिवाचन Oh, jadi kita mahitan ni ek kali na wasit aja, ek keran no na. Pih tu mana itu ek? Me granthe, am kisi kene ek ragi ne kiewa nte. Asha ame gunan dwe ingin no na me me ne kote. Kau mandu me granthe laba gani me tawas tawa ti me. Me kapi le laba gani pulang antar jali osi. Khatru gina maga hande pulang, pote na maga hande pulang. Apa kiki kote kisah odur ingin laba gani pulang. Ani kut apa? Videshi madya hara, tema cerne ke, hame ke mukti bina. Oka oka bukoda. Mungkin tena mage potoling. जाना प्रेम होता होगा तब मैं योगे हमारे तरफ बहावित आवे ना गोड़ा मटर पानी वीडियो वाला में एक गने गोड़ा क्विस्टरा हाने वा इतनी महिता ने मैं आधे उधेर देख के ने हाँ ना महिता ने मैं माँ गोड़ा आंधुने का हन्ने मैं पोते इन तरह में मुकदमे के लोगों सामीक्षण एक ने के लंडन वाला कर लती इन्हें केंट 
गवेशन संबंध <laughs> महंगल अभी अभी ओणम के ने कबाँ से लाई दी है दारु सह दिल्ली में तुन आशीर्वाद ले बियो तो मिनी सुबह उठा पत्तू ना ऐनी सा अब तो मार्ट सीना हम उसमें होने तमांगे दारु आंटे तमांगे साहूदर साहूदरी आंटे प्रकाश करने वाले ये दे बाय न तो मेरे नहीं मार दिए कि प्रकाश कराना पुड़वांग ये आदर नहीं है ये विविध अत्ये तुले समाज विद्यात्मको कितनो ऐसकी इन्हें देश बालमो अभी राठाक एकमो कोडिया क्या टे जीवात्मे न विविध मिनिसून हैटी ऐटे अभी तुम सिंगले में नया दे आये हैटी ऐटे इकट्ठा आदरिन जीवात्मे न क्रिसोस जीसस वांसे के आदरे सबे आदरे एक बावटे विदागन ना आदरे एक बावटे परिवारते � शारीरिकवाद Right. Um, I think that uh, concludes the the introduction to the book. Uh, so um, I, I'm not quite sure whether everybody who's in the audience can understand the whole conversation um but i i hope that you most of you managed to understand and follow what was going on so uh this is now uh, we are open to any questions if uh, i can see mahendra already with his hand up so mahendra please go for it uh my question will follow later but uh, can i start with a request to Bishop Keithy, not everybody would have followed uh, the excellent interview in Sinhalese. Is it possible for you to summarize or tell us the main points that you want to get through in this book for the uh, 
purpose of those who may not have followed exactly what happened. That would be most helpful. Thank you. It can be done yeah, if necessary. Yeah. yeah, would you mind saying something about the main points? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, now, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll try to give a kind of a very brief uh, introduction. Uh, yeah. This whole book is about shifting identities from home to host country, uh, concentrating on ethnicity and religion. Now, uh, I mean, not that when uh, migrations take place, not that they need to reestablish their identity and how they have done it. And I chose London and not that single Buddhist and Christians for my case study. Uh, but I mean, not that I, I created a theory by doing that. Uh, I mean, things like, uh, I mean, this is a vast research and uh, the mode of settlement, how they have settled, whether they have settled ethnically, religiously, culturally, professionally, things like that. And also how the issues of the home country affect the host country, how the issues of host country affect the home country. And also uh, the, the whole research was done in the background of the you know, attack on World Trade Center in 2001, 11th of September. Because uh, in the fields of sociology, anthropology, philosophy, and all that uh, other uh, humanities, uh, there was a kind of a you no know, expectation, you no know, that understanding that religions are diminishing. Uh, I mean, the whole uh, uh, process took place with the rise of Darwinism, that we need to redeem the uh, rational man from the emotional man. Religions are emotional, therefore you don't need religion. But with migrations and various other socio-cultural factors, uh, the empirical side of religion has become very important. Now, this is not the religion practice in the church or Moscow or Kovil or I mean, temple or somewhere, but no, religious beliefs have affected the people uh, to do various activities. Uh, now, at the moment, I'm uh, involved in another research. Actually, it is finished. I did another research called Creation and Recreation of Identities. I have... Uh, kind of know that revived uh, two theories done by uh, one theory done by uh, uh, this, uh, Benedict Anderson called know that uh, imagine communities and the, the kind of know that uh, socio-political theory and the other one is called no conflicts of civil I mean uh, con conflict of uh, civilizations by uh, Huntington Samuel Huntington because now in the 20th century they said in time to come the, the wars will not be between nations but between cultures and no concepts and things like that. I mean it is happening now. Uh, now I have revived that and now that I have done other research called creation and recreation of identities presented to a number of universities. They are considering now that conferring a kind of you know, higher degree for me. Uh, now this whole research was done on immigrants now that uh, to show the you know, intertwined nature of ethno-religious identities because now that uh, Many Asian and African countries whose ethnicity and religion, this intertwined nature uh, for their liberation or you know, that or their independence struggles. Now, I mean, here you can't explain everything in a short lecture like this. Now, there are various models. Now, you get certain religions, you not know, that where ethnicity is the foundation. There are ethnicities where religion is the foundation. You not know, that in certain cases they are intertwined. And there are philosophical, not that religions, not that uh, now if you take like Dutch Reformed Church or Russian Orthodox Church, you can't talk about the religion without the uh, uh, ethnicity. And also when you get religions such as Islam and Judaism, where ethnicity and religion are intertwined. Now with migration, as uh, uh, Jose Casanova says, now that uh, when all the religions and ethnicities meet in the same marketplace, now in uh, late 50s, now all those things now that began uh, as a second uh, World War realities. No, there was a theory called, especially in America, melting pot theory. They thought all the religions and ethnicities and cultures will come to the marketplace, same marketplace, and no, they'll come to a melting pot. But what has happened is just the opposite. Various no ethnicities and religions they are creating various models to become relevant entities in the same market. Now, city like London, no New York, because you get not that all the religions and cultures and languages. Uh, I mean, to become a citizen in that kind of a setup, no, you have to emphasize no, what you have brought from your home country. But uh, not in the way that is done in their uh, home country, but in a, in a kind of a, no, that, a creative and innovative way. Now, we don't have any research on these things. Now, this is where no, uh, research of this nature is very important. I think that introduction is sufficient. We can have a, a creative introduction with your own interest and no question. Thank you very much. Okay, I don't ask a question.
Aja, you need to unmute. Thank you very much, Raman Father, for that um, uh, introduction to your research. Um, my question is, um, have you studied the effect of the cultural identity that the second generation experiences? <laughs> now, uh, some of our children who are brought up in this country, uh, on one hand, when it comes to cricket, they embrace Sri Lankanism, but when it comes to food, they reject Sri Lankanism and um, also because of the language barrier, uh, <laughs> they are more aligned to the English and the British culture than to the Sri Lankan culture. It saddens us, but have you studied the effect of the second generation uh, of this cultural identity? Yes, I did, yeah, and very interesting, yeah. That's another uh, special area. I think someone should do a special research on that. Actually, I have studied second and third generations. I, kind of had no discussions with them, all that, no? Uh, now, uh, uh, in England, they talk about, uh, I mean, two concepts, no? In the field of sociology, anthropology, and cultural studies, no? Assimilation and integration. They ask whether uh, second and third generation assimilate or integrate. These are two terms used in England. But actually, I have challenged them. They neither assimilate nor integrate. They become hybrid. That's a two I've been telling. Now, now, actually, my theory is accepted up to a certain extent by the sociologists and anthropologists. Now, I often get invitations to know, share my ideas on this. And I published you know, that number of books after this book called Ethno Religious Identities, Ethnicity, Identity and Religion, you know, collection of books. That's why I did another research on creation and recreation of identities. Now, uh, these youngsters are very interesting because uh, now they are bicultural or some tricultural like that because they can keep two, two three cultures together. When they are with their parents, they behave like Sri Lankans. No, that I mean, they may not speak the language. I agree. No, but I mean, they absorb the culture. No, because no, that happens with other Asians also. Because no, that even with British people, I'm a, I'm a qualified youth and community worker in England. Uh, sometimes you get these clashes. I'll give one one example without names. No, because I was a youth and community worker qualified. No, I had the license. Still, I hold it actually. I worked in youth centers now. Uh, uh, a Tamil girl in London, you know, that uh, fell in love with a British boy. But you know, Tamils are very conscious of their culture, you know, and uh, the father said, no, you can't have this affair. Then the uh, uh, daughter reported the father and said, my father is a racist. <laughs> that was a big issue. Then uh, the child was, you know these things because you live in London, yeah. Child was taken into uh, care. Then they were looking for a Sri Lankan and somebody has said, no, that in uh, England, no, the clergy persons, priests are called vicars, actually. They say there's a Sri Lankan vicar who is fully integrated, who is in Canterbury and he does work for the Archbishop of Canterbury. Then I was called, I was in the vehicle and no faith and all that. I, I had to speak to this girl and almost, I mean, no, in, in, in not in bad sense, good sense, no, that they know, no, your father loves you, look after you, whatever, that they had to write a report and got out of care. And I told the father also, I mean, you are in England, you can't do this now. And then no, now she's doing well, but you get all these clashes, no? And also I have been working uh, for detention camps in Dover and no, uh, uh, in Heathrow and all that, no? When our people try to, no, uh, stroke children, you get problems that they that in their pedophiles and no? And some Indians and Pakistanis were going after girls and then they were arrested. I have got involved in so many things like that in London and other parts of the, you know, that uh, the UK because of that, you no, know, because of this generational gap and, you no, know, because of the concept, yeah. But I think uh, you need to, I mean, if you're interested, you can read on this whole concept of assimilation and integration. But actually, my, my uh, theory is, you no, know, they neither assimilate nor integrate. They become hybrid. You no, know, they keep two cultures together. Therefore, it is too much for British people to study them. Therefore, you need, you no, know, that's why they were asking me to do about, you no, know, that, uh, Places of worship, how they recreate the culture, and you no, know, that, that's something new to them, and you know, they find it difficult to comprehend that. Uh, now uh, you need more research on this area uh, to have a better understanding. Hope uh, I have given some kind of you know, that uh, interpretation and you know, that explanation for your question. Thank you. Shihan, you got a question? Yes, uh, thank you, Bishop Kirti, for that interesting. Oh, interview. Um, you can hear me, yes? Um, yes? Yes, I can yes. hear you. Talking about assimilation and integration and kind of either or phenomenon, it's a kind of a Western idea because 
I, uh, my work is about the African diaspora, one of my aspects. And in India, people are, I, they're not, they're not, they are Indian, but they're also African. And Western scholars find it very difficult to understand their hybrid identity or multiple identity. Identities, yeah. Yes. And in that respect, I also find race a very problematic term to apply to Sri Lanka or South Asia even. Because we say jati or they say, Sri Lanka people say when a jati ekenek, ape jati ekenek neme. So uh, jati is translated, I translate it as kind. So it is a, it's a bit of a dilemma because in the West, they analyze society with race, class, you know, that kind of parameters. So, I mean, I don't know really because sometimes, I mean, the word Muslim in Sri Lanka, for example, how do people see difference or otherness or alterity in Sri Lanka? Because why sometimes in terms of religion, sometimes in terms of caste, and, but I've heard people saying that the Tamils are a different race, which is a dilemma. So I, I thought I might ask you that. What do you think? Yeah, actually, uh, Annie, sorry, what's your name? Uh, My name is uh, Shihan. Shihan. Yeah, actually, yeah, this is a very problematic categorization. Westerners have categorized according to their, uh, their convenience. Actually, we don't, we don't fall under no, that ethnicities or race. It's very different because now that it's a mixture of no caste, class, code, all that. No. Now, therefore, no, you have to expand your boundaries. Now, for instance, they categorize us not that as not that Sri Lankans. No, when you categorize us as Sri Lankans, actually Sri Lankans have different types. And they don't fall not that within the category of ethnicity or race. Because those are very Western types. No? And also, when you go to you know, Africa, Africans have the tribal identity. No? And no, that is another uh, different thing. No? That's why uh, up to a certain extent, no, that some sociologists from India and Africa have studied no, these models no, where ethno-religious identities, where ethnicity and religion, no? now if you take Muslims and uh, Jews, they're intertwined. Now if you take no, Buddhists in Sri Lanka, uh, uh, in Sri Lanka, in the Sri Lankan context, no, that ethnicity is one of the main foundations of religion, no? that uh, goes with their identity. And not that uh, uh, the whole, I mean, the word of ethnos, no, that coming, coming from the Greek background. The race, not that uh, like physical appearance and things like that. No? That's why uh, in my latest research, not that I have done this research on creation and recreation of identities. And also they are not static, they are dynamic. They keep on changing. Uh, therefore, we need to sort of know that understand the changing nature of these identities as well. Uh, with their music and architecture, thought forms, know that their professions, know that things are changing. But uh, still uh, in the you know, West, and sociological and anthropological categories, they try to live with the you know, that uh, same you no know, categories that they have learned. But they are they are not uh, effective enough to analyze uh, uh, these categories. You no, know, that uh, it's a new experience for them because still you know that uh, uh, their concepts are very colonial and you no, know, they just you no know, expand the colonial you no know, philosophies. But I think you need to go into you no. Know, I mean, we have the colonial era, post-colonial, modern, post-modern concept should be evaluated. Uh, but I think uh, that is not happening very effectively because now that what happened was uh, from 1850s, these fields ignored the religious beliefs. Again, I'm not talking about the established religions. Now, like you know, some of my professors have done you know, that uh, research on believing without belonging and things like that. How they recreate their you know, concepts and things. I, I, actually, that's why they are unable to control all these you know, that, uh, the attacks and wars and all, because now they think they know everything, but now that uh, these people are cleverer than them know that uh, now destructive things are highlighted and handled, but the creative and innovative things are not highlighted and handled because they don't affect very much, but they keep you know, those things within themselves. Therefore, we need more research on these you know, things uh, uh, to analyze uh, the global village. Thank you very much. Okay. You're welcome. Yeah. Okay. I think it's this time it's Rasika, I believe. Aja, I don't know. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Reverend Father, that was really fascinating. And I don't think I've come across anybody who um, is an ordained priest who also teaches uh, Buddhism. And, and that's what uh, fascinated me. Um, my, my question is, now, um, is there any conflict when you do that in terms of, for example, there are some... Uh, no, no religion teaches anything bad that I uh, accept, but 
um, for example, there are some fundamental differences between Christianity and Buddhism, such as Buddhism talks of rebirth in Christianity, you either go to hell or heaven or depending on what you, uh, what sort of life you've led. And then um, in Christianity, animals are for human consumption, whereas Buddhism, you know, killing or it is, you know, completely um, taboo. So when you teach these concepts, does it cause any conflict in what you are in your ordained religion? No, actually, uh, I'm not the first to do this. Uh, uh, now, our fourth bishop of Colombo, no, that bishop, Paris Copperstone, religion Stephen Copperstone, no, he was the person who wrote uh, the first uh, detailed book on Buddhism in 1886. Uh, therefore, I have a line of bishops who have done this. Then, no, even my first bishop, Lakdasa, Dimil, Lakshman, Vikram Singh, and Anil Sankal, actually, all of them have done it, but I have taken it to a different level. True, I agree. But actually, the things that you mentioned, I take note that what you mentioned, no, that uh, now surface level, you see a lot of conflict. But when you go to philosophical level, uh, you can have a better understanding. Now, now we'll take note some of the things that you mentioned. Now you said, no, in uh, Buddhism, you talk about, no, that uh, actually Buddhism doesn't talk about rebirth, reincarnation. No, you get rebirth in Hinduism, no? I mean, no, that's why when Buddha was asked, who will be born in the, no, that next life, they, he said, not I, but I, no? I mean, no, all the glaciers, no, go on, no? Now, now, uh, if you go to deep Christian theology, uh, people have got stuck with the idea of no, that uh, uh, the hell and heaven. But you get a purification process no, in Christianity as well, until you are absorbed into no, that eternal bliss. Uh, I mean, I may be uh, speaking very strange language as a Christian. Yeah, I mean, those things are not analyzed. Even now that uh, the whole uh, doctrine of anatta, there's no permanent soul. Now, uh, uh, Christian philosophy and theology was affected by uh, Greek philosophy body, mind, and soul. But if you go to the original, no, that uh, Christian philosophy, they talk about, no, that coming from the dust. Now, even the first man, Adam, Adama in Hebrew means, no, that earth. Edom, Edom is connected to that. And then you get the breath of life into that. Uh, no, no talk about soul. I mean, no, that is very uh, close to Anakta doctrine. And no, that uh, even uh, Bible, no, doesn't talk about, no, that... Uh, Animals are not that consumption. No, if you go to first pages of the Bible, they say, no, you are to eat, no, that vegetables and things like that. But it doesn't prohibit. That is also very close to the doctrine of Buddha. Because Buddha said, no, chetanaham bhikkave kammang vadam. You know, if you have no intention of harming anybody. But uh, uh, Jesus said, no, that uh, I'm the good shepherd. I look after this, no. I mean, no, that, uh, that's why even bishops carry a staff, no, to look after them lovingly. You know, that uh, uh, Christianity doesn't encourage anybody to harm life. Uh, again, now very close to Chetana Hambikkave Kammang And now that uh, if you analyze these concepts, now deeper sense. And also, now, fortunately, I belong to a, a kind of a Christian tradition now that uh, which appreciate all that. Uh, some extreme uh, Christians may criticize me, but <laughs> it's not my concern. Yeah, but I think we need this kind of now that uh, analytical and now that detailed studies on these things now to understand each other. And also, we need not to agree on everything. We need to have no diversity in unity, but to understand the other person, you know, that in a, in a deeper sense. No? And also, the now, is it no killing of animals? No? That's why I always know I have a lot of no, Buddhist monks who are my close friends. No? It is much more than Satun no Maravi. You will not harm any life. It is much more than Satun no Maravi. You will not harm any life. You will not harm any life. You see, you don't get the, you know, the deeper philosophical idea. No? And know that you can kill people with words. No? That is also no Paranadipata according to me. I mean, you not agree. No? A lot of people daily kill other people know that by using their words and concepts. And, no? and no? <laughs> I think that is no worse than no? that uh, Satun Mary. You, know? you keep on killing people. Uh, I mean, uh, if you can have a dialogue like that, we can come to a better understanding. And uh, uh, in uh, uh, the, our Christian tradition, it is encouraged. Actually, when we train priests, all of them study other religion. It's compulsory, actually. That's the one area of study. Not just not that uh, the superficial surface level, but in the not deeper level. And also, uh, we study the popular religion, how it is practiced, why it is affecting the society, and all the tensions. Those things also we study sociology and anthropology and things like that. But at the same time, we try to you know, study the empirical side of religion as well. Thank you. Thank you. Mahendra? 
Uh, thank you. I don't want to hog the question time, but uh, I would like your views, Bishop Kirti, on a problem I have. <laughs> uh, if you, let, let me give a parallel. If you try to think of how a country should be managed politically, you can say there are different philosophies. There's Marxism, socialism, capitalism, and so on. And there are various parties which will subscribe to that and say, okay, we, we will do what we think is the best for the country. But when you compare to religion, the difference is this. These parties will say, we have a common goal in mind and we believe that this is the best way to go. They will also say there may be other ways, but we believe this is the best way to go. But they do accept that that's not the only way. Now, if you take religion, some people regard religion as a kind of theory of everything. It is the truth. And whether you like it or not, the truth is the truth. So, for example, if the only truth is that you must accept Jesus or accept Allah, or whatever it is, and that's the only way that will lead to your happiness, then whether you like it or not, that is the truth. And if you are very sincere about the people who are close to you, you'll be very worried about people who don't accept that now going, if you like, astray out of sheer humanity. I don't like to see my friend, my daughter, my husband, my wife going astray. So it is my duty to make sure that people tread the right path. Okay. But within that group, there are people who say, okay, that may be the truth, but we also believe that there are other paths which people can follow and they have common elements. And if you follow that path, you'll get to the ultimate destination anyway. But such a view will be good because that's the type of harmonious view. You're a Christian, you do good to people, you serve the community, you and wonderful. Whether it's rebirth or hell or hell, whatever, you, you are going the right way. But if you become what I call a fundamentalist and you really believe that the theory of everything is this, Buddhism is the truth, everything else is false, Christian is the truth. Now such beliefs are dangerous in my view and that's what has contributed to hazards in world history with religion causing problems. How can we get rid of that and, and have coming right from the top, from the Catholic Church, Christian Church, Buddhists, a view that there are ways to live and there are different methods that people advocate, but there is no theory of everything. And even if there's a theory of everything, it doesn't really matter. How can we get that? Then we will cease to be worried. Oh my God, he's a Catholic. What's he doing? He's going to hell. He's a Buddhist. Uh, oh, Buddhist will say, oh my God, he's going to suffer. So how can we get this theory of everything out of the way and say it's an approach? I don't know whether I got my message across to you. Yeah, no, I, I'll tell you. No, actually, yeah, we have been uh, wrestling with this now that I mean, no, for a long time now. Yeah, I'm concerned maybe 40 years now. Yeah. Now, I, I mean, now that uh, just to explain now that in actual form, now usually we have different no, cultural, social, religious identities. Now, all of us have no, what is called xenophobia, the fear of the other. Very often, no, when we don't know them, no, we are frightened of them. Now, for instance, before I learned a little bit of Tamil, no, that when people spoke Tamil, no, it was irritating. But now, because I understand Tamil, I'm not a scholar, but I can just manage. No, it's not a big issue for me. You know, that uh, now, that's why about uh, 30 odd years ago, I created this word xenophilia. It is used now by many people. I don't have patent right. Now, I think we need to create xenophilia. Now, usually when we see somebody different from us, no, we reject them. I mean, no, that when you know that you can't live like that, you try to compromise, you try to tolerate, you try to synchronize, no? But I think what we need is not that what I call symbiosis. I mean, not that symbiosis means not that you respect each other, not because no, we are like them. Because now usually to come together, we try to see, you know, uniting factors, binding factors. They are good. But at the same time, we should learn to appreciate, you know, the differences. Now that now we we need no diversity. We need to celebrate diversity. Now, when I say symbiosis, what I mean is I often give this example from the agricultural world. Now you get now that huge tall trees and no small bushes. Now these uh, trees now give shade to bushes. Now they fertile uh, the soil through no roots, maybe by giving nitrogen not to tall trees. They don't depend on each other, but they enrich each other. 
but they are different in sizes, shapes, and functions. But they exist together and also they need each other to live. Therefore, no, that I think we need to come to that kind of symbiosis. But the thing is, no, very especially when people come from monocultural, monoethnic background, no, that uh, they are not exposed to others. That's why I have been advocating, I am an advisor to, no, the Department of Education textbooks and things like that to create that, no, symbiosis. How to exist together by holding my view. I have a right to exist. At the same time, when it comes to politics and power, uh, people try to use various identities, you not know, that for their hidden agendas and ulterior motives. That's the other thing. You rouse up the feelings of other people. Now you know that. No, I mean no. At the independence, no, that many politicians said you know did English. I remember my father being a man, no, that who studied Latin, Greek, and all. They say learn your singular, but if you don't learn English, you are lost forever. At the same time, even today, no, that many politicians, no, they. Uh, kind of know that uh, keep on emphasizing single Buddhist, single Buddhist, but their children are educated in all Christian schools. No, their children are married to Christian partners. They live together without any issue. But it is not good for other people. Now, I mean, this is kind of know that uh, uh, misleading people. But I think we need to develop this symbiosis. How to appreciate and celebrate our diversity so that we can work together and you know, enrich this world. Now, think of a world you now with one tree. I mean, just with coconut tree, what an ugly world, then how can you get you know, what is necessary in all that to live? Uh, therefore, no, I think uh, we need to emphasize in all religions to celebrate diversity. Now, I'll do two examples from Christianity and Buddhism because most of us are from those faiths. You know, once the, uh, the disciples of Jesus saw you know, that people healing others by using the name of Jesus, then they rebuked them and you know, that uh, reprimanded them and said, he is my master, you can't. But Jesus said, no, those who are not against us are for us. Again, know that in the life of Buddha, no, once uh, Buddha said, no, that uh, now the truth is like this jungle, but I am giving you a handful of leaves. This is enough for your salvation. I think there are so many things that we haven't grasped. Yes, I believe now that my profession is the best profession, my culture is the best culture, my religion is the best not religion, my language is the best thing. I have a right to do that. But at the same time, I can enrich my culture, my religion, my language, know that uh, by now that getting integrated, assimilated, and also know that by uh, having a broad idea of all this. I think uh, that should be inculcated you know, then inculcated in the minds of you know, children. You know, being an island, that doesn't happen very much in Sri Lanka. But uh, uh, when it comes to you know, that England, you know, even in schools, there are a lot of multicultural activities. You know? They keep on doing that from their small age. You know? They try to get them to live together. But I think that should be encouraged. And know that, that that should be developed so that we learn to respect each other by appreciating their own know that differences and also uh, uh, by know that valuing our own culture and religion and ethnicity and professions and know that other. Uh, my sorry, uh, Bishop Kriti, my, my question is rather deeper than that. I, I accept all what you said, but when you are when you are in in the, in the religion frame, you are talking yeah. of something that claims to explain. If you like the whole thing, the universe, life, everything, right? And if, if somebody believes that that is the truth, then you could say he's, he's entitled or not entitled, understandably keen to push that in, because he has the benefits of humanity in mind. So if somebody says, look, I'm going to convert people to Buddhism or Christianity because I believe I'm helping them in the way, and therefore I justify myself. Because this is the trouble in religion. It talks about the ultimate truth, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah correct, correct. Yeah, yeah I think, I think now that uh, this is where I know that I have been doing research on the whole concept Benedict Anderson. Now, imagine communities. All of us have imagined community. Mm -hmm. That happens not only with religions, even now that you may not observe it. Now that uh, all, all of us have imagined communities, now that we imagine Nirvana, Swarga, all that kind of thing. Actually, if you study those religions, no, they have not emphasized in those religions no, in that way. But this is to know that uh, kind of know that establish your identity and no, feel secure. Uh, you think now that uh, you no, no, Buddha did not try to convert everybody to Buddhism. No, I mean, Buddha was not a Buddhist, Christ was not a Christian. But these are the you know, cultural elements now that uh, with the you know, philosophical and you know, theological ideas you now they have come to. But actually, you know, that uh, extreme extremists have that kind of understanding. But I think, you know, that even in their own religions, you know, that uh, that is not emphasized in that way. But over the years, they have developed concepts like that uh, for their own, you know, that survival. But I think religions exist for revival, not for survival. 
No, these are all survival tactics. No, that I agree. No, that people think no, you have to convert everybody to Christianity, convert everybody to Buddhism. But Jesus never tried. That Buddha never tried that. <laughs> and know that, uh, but they have forgotten all that. But yeah, but I agree. Know that with you. Know that uh, uh, what's happening. Know that uh, among extremist groups. But I think we need to have a better understanding to promote the philosophical idea of know that uh, symbiosis and know that harmony. Uh, even know that that this is the issue. Know that even from the theological and religious perspective. Now this doesn't happen within the religion very often in the temple or church or anything. No, that the empirical side of religion. Uh, because now that we don't handle that, no, what is happening, the dialogue that is going on in the society among extremist groups. That's why now, even in England, now that British Bible Society, now that we are having a lot of discussions and now that uh, uh, kind of now that seminars on the Bible in the marketplace, how the biblical concepts are used in the marketplace for their own gain by the extremist groups, by the now that uh, kind of no militant group, uh, maybe Quran and now that tripeticals. How they have distorted the uh, doctrines, know that uh, sometimes know that very contextual doctrine is not distorted to create a universal doctrine uh, to achieve their own end. Now, these are the things know that we need to go deeper into that and know that uh, have a better understanding. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Any, any other questions? If not, I have a question to you. Okay, let me ask uh, while other people think about this uh, uh, further questions. So um, when I was, I was brought up as you know, uh, in the Church of Ceylon background, uh, in my youth, I used to go to the temple, uh, but for a different reason, because there was a library attached to the temple and I was a, a member of the library. So uh, every Sunday I used to go there. And as a, as a consequence, I was just sort of involved peripherally in some Buddhist activities. Now, when I came to, well, in summary, as a Christian, I had very little exposure to Buddhism or any other religion in Sri Lanka. Now, in contrast, when I came to UK, uh, I go to um, the, the temple with my wife, and even when she's not going, sometimes I do go and I study uh, Buddhism and I have lots more involvement with uh, other religions, mainly probably with Buddhism. Now, in your model, which you have studied, can you explain why that happens? You know, something which I never did in Sri Lanka, whereas I'm much more into it uh, in UK. And if... If you can explain that, can that model be used in Sri Lanka back home to improve our religious harmony? You know, like uh, more Buddhists going to, you know, third or getting involved in uh, actively knowing what they do and vice versa. Yeah, Ruan, correct. Now, uh, I have noticed this in my research. Now, when you come to England, uh, there are various reasons for that. Uh, this is another you know, topic for another separate seminar for maybe oh, three, four hours. Yeah. Now, when you have a shift in identities, you know, that uh, you look for you know, that uh, uh, factors and you know, philosophies and cultures to recreate your identity. Therefore, you now when you go to another country, whether you are Muslim or Hindu, anybody, uh, uh, the Buddhist identity is you now unavoidable. Therefore, you know, because you now when you talk about Sri Lanka, therefore, I mean, you no, know, and also in England, it's not a threat because it's not a subjective experience, so it's a very objective experience. Therefore, you are not uh, scared to study that. Therefore, you go to, I know that all the Christians, Muslims, they go to Buddhist temples in London, they get themselves exposed, no? They can read a little bit of Sinhala, they are learned Sinhala, they send their children also to study Sinhala to Buddhist temples, whether you are Hindu or Muslim or anybody, because you are not threatened by that, no? But when you come to Sri Lanka, you try to establish your identity, you know, that this is the, you know, that psychology of, you no know, majority politics, no? You try to show, you know, that, no, I mean, no, if you have the majority religion and majority ethnicity, we have the power, but which is a kind of, you know, that uh, myth. Because now that now, now minority groups have gained, you know, that more power than no majority group, you know, that in Africa, Asia, everybody. Now, take Sri Lanka, now, single Buddhists are the majority, but they know that if you take other so-called ethnic and religious categories, you know, that they have, you know, that four sociological factors, which have made them more important. Now, you know, this is not part of my research. Now that now, first thing is that geographically, even in Sri Lanka, very well spread. 
and also know that uh, uh, their level of education is higher than other category their level of international relations are higher than other category no now because of this know that uh, they have not lot of psychological strength although they are uh, uh, not uh, uh, strong numerically but when you go to another country you know that uh, you don't get those sociological factors therefore uh, you are exposed and know that you like like to learn and also then you need to create your common sri lankan identity whether you like it or not to do that you do and know that but now see that now although i live in sri lanka my father was an irrigation engineer and he worked in all parts of the island i still remember when he worked in that now i'm talking about late uh, 60s and early 70s now i still remember when i was about seven year old boy he used to go for hindu ceremony and come with all the ashes he used to come with you no know, all the pirit noodles and all that they used to ask him you no know, that you are a christian no 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 we need to respect all the religions i used to say no you are not a tamil you are not a hindu but they invite you they say no i mean i am not betraying my religion no that no i am respecting them and also respecting them from the you know that the bottom of my heart therefore no i get exposed no uh, i mean if you have that kind of background as a child i think it goes a long way now i mean no that you and i grew up together because Because of that background, every day, every day I was in temple. You see, my friends were Buddhists, no? I mean, no, I used to go and support them. They used to come to our church and know that no help us with Christmas. I mean, this was not an organized dialogue. Now, in my diocese, know that we have places now. Uh, they they have been know that uh, the farmers, no, for chena cultivation, seventy eight years ago they have migrated. One particular place, they all of them had small huts, not church, but we been some churches. Now in Hiriyala, uh, the pressure of the uh, Uh, that that Christian community was the treasure of the temple also. You know, monk likes to keep a Christian as a treasure of the temple. Nobody has taught them because they have learned through their lifestyle. No, so they haven't become threat to other people. There are a lot of you know that uh, uh, so-called mixed marriages, Buddhist marrying Christians, Christian men. Now even now when they have funerals, they invite me. I go there. You no, know, that uh, Christian Buddhist. No, because uh, in our diocese, you no, know, that kind of you no, know, that uh, symbiosis has been encouraged by Bishop Lakdas and Lakshman and others. Now that's a threat to other people. Not only uh, encourage, no, they have taken folk music for liturgies and no architecture, thought forms, attitudes, values, no, everything, no, is been no that uh, amalgamated into no that they are faith. Now he has said we are not just uh, Christian Sri Lankans, we are Sri Lankan Christians. That's not that Jesus belongs to the whole universe. Now this kind of no inward looking introvert ideas are presented by people to feel secure and to show that no, we have the no that kind of a supra brand. But I think uh, religious philosophies haven't encouraged that. Religious leaders, I mean, in in particular instances, now in the moment of crisis, yes, they have emphasized. But generally, they haven't given general philosophies on that. Uh, Buddha said, "Bahuja ne hitaya, bahuja ne sukaya." No, I mean, not that uh, for the well-being of everybody. And also, Jesus said, "No, preach this doctrine, not that to the ends of the world." Now, I mean, not that that was a philosophy given now for the enrichment. Uh, and also know that both Buddha and Jesus, I'm giving example, never tried to convert everybody. That was not the idea, but to give that philosophy. But I think you get get that open attitude in countries like England because it's open, no? It's not a threat. Now in England, no, you get uh, now recently two Anglican bishop, retired bishop, of course, they became Roman Catholic. That is their freedom. Nobody is no concern about that. No. Uh, that kind of openness you don't find in Sri Lanka because of the uh, the identity issue. Because now that uh, your identity is tied up with you know religion and ethnicity, and now that if you change that, it becomes a threat to everybody. This is because we are very inward looking and introvert. Now that in, because we are in the other end of the world, we get similar issues in African countries as well. But to create that now in Sri Lanka will be extremely difficult now because of the identity issue and also how the the the, the politicians uh, are using that. No? I mean, no, always for politics, no religion and ethnicity play a vital role, no. But that doesn't happen in the same way in England, no. It's very different, no. No, two different, no, that uh, cultural and contextual setup. Thank you very much, uh, Bishop. Uh, I think Ajanta or Rasika has a question. This is related to uh, Ruan's comment, really. So, uh, however much um, both uh, the Reverend and Ruan had uh, exposure to, say, Buddhism in their childhood, unfortunately, the Sri Lankan education system segregates the different religions. And we had uh, Buddhism, then the Christians go and have Christianity and so on. Now, our children who grew up in this country, 
um, they made this observation that it is RE or religious education here. And all the children from primary school are taught all the religions. So they learn to respect and um, uh, have a rapport with the other, other religions. Now, when is that going to come to Sri Lanka? Because that would be the answer to having compassion and uh, respect for other religions. You see, although I am Ruan's age, now 38 long years I have been fighting for this. I mean, you can't, uh, I mean, I, I taught religious education in England, no, that in uh, schools in Kent. And I, I, at one stage, about 20 years ago, uh, we introduced no section called My Neighbor's Religion. You studied your religion and know that we introduce all the other religions. No? But then politicians, some or other, removed that also. You see now that, uh, uh, and uh, recently I have been attending, and uh, recently I attended a one day, full day seminar also. This has been going on now that now we are trying to uh, uh, revive all the syllabuses. Now we are RE, religious education is concerned, at least to have the same structure for all religions. Now we have been discussing, but no, now when it comes to, no, I mean, no, I'll give a small example. Well, now, uh, we want to agree that all the religions came from another country. Christianity, Islam, no? But then, uh, I mean, sorry to say this, not that I say it openly. Now, there are many uh, extreme Buddhists, they find it difficult to understand. They try to say, no, that uh, Buddha was born in Sri Lanka. I mean, they go to that extent. Uh, I, I mean, no, you have this kind of problem because it is tied up with identity. You, know? you don't have an objective reflection of religion. When it comes to majority religion, no, that they try to emphasize, no, and no, that should be taught. No, actually, I have been telling, no, let's uh, teach 50% of his own religion and 50% of other religion. Now, this is what we do in our uh, seminaries when we train priests, no, they do a university degree. Uh, they, they study not only religions in Sri Lanka, even they study about Taoism, Shintoism, all that. Uh, so, do I train is a man? Because not that you should be exposed, no. But in Sri Lanka, it's very hard because it is not just a religion. No, it is tied up with your identity. No, your brand is better than my brand. That kind of idea. Now, uh, uh, Sinhala Buddhists would try to emphasize that by not showing their contextual authority. But uh, uh, Hindus and Muslims and Christians, they try to establish that by showing their universal authority. Now, we need to come together and have an objective religion of all these concepts. But at the level of the Department of Education where I'm advisor, it's very hard. Uh, to convince people on these things but at least know that uh, if you can introduce know that uh, now we, we are working on that at the moment we are uh, revising all the syllabuses to introduce other religions know that uh, in the first know that uh, section of the module now we teach all the religions but then know that uh, deeper sense you teach your own religion but then the first sections will be same for everybody that kind of model that's what we are working on at the moment but we have a lot of issues with that also so some people are frightened or that then uh, uh, people will learn the other religions and know that uh, their identity will be affected by that. So that, no, I mean, that is the ultimate aim. But some people don't want that. That's the problem. They want to emphasize their own, know that ethnicity and religion, know, so that uh, they could know, uh, get the power and know that get the votes. No, uh, that is a continuous struggle. Yeah, we are concerned. No, education is concerned. Thank you. You're welcome, yeah. <laughs> Has I got another question? Uh, yeah, well, uh, just to um, uh, take that to another level, um, we find that the children brought up in this country uh, move away from a single religion. They understand all the religions, but they move away from their mother religion, as you call it, uh, the, whether it's Christianity or uh, Buddhism or whatever. Uh, maybe because they have learned that all the other all the other religions are good as well, so that uh, the religious feeling in them is less than a person who is brought up in Sri Lankan tradition in Sri Lanka. Did you find that in your research? Yeah, actually, uh, sorry, Ane, what's your name? Uh, Ajanta. 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 No, actually, uh, use the right word. Religious experience, not the spiritual experience. Now, some people find it difficult even to understand me. Actually, no, spirituality and religion are two different things. Now, I mean, religion is like a you know, fish in a tank. Spirituality is like a sea. 
Now, I mean, where I am concerned, when I keep on understanding other religions and other ideologies, I become a better Christian. Because otherwise, now, now Jesus has said, love your enemy, not just love your neighbor. I mean, if I don't know my neighbor, if I can't learn something from my, I mean, no enemy, how can I be a good Christian? You see, now, this is the problem. No, you compartmentalize. No? Therefore, I think, no, your, your children are having the uh, kind of a better spirituality. Uh, but they have their respect for their mother religion, but at the same time, they come into a different level, you know, that of their spirituality. Not by, you know, that becoming very selfish of your religion. Now, I call them I specialists, no? If you become very selfish of your religion, no, you betray your religion, no? Because you become extremist and then you try to attack other people, kill other people to save your religion. But that is not the purpose of religion, no? You have to let things go. That's what Jesus said, no, if you want to gain your life, no, you have to lose it. Buddha said, no, you have to know that, no, I mean, no, uh, uh, get rid of your cravings. Uh, even if you crave for your religion, no, that's a sin. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, no, a lot of people find it difficult to understand that. No, I mean, uh, you, have to, uh, you have to reduce your cravings. Uh, in that perspective, I think, no, when you call I doubt relationship, when you understand the Tao, no, you understand I better. Uh, but yeah. uh, unfortunately, that is not encouraged in countries like Sri Lanka, India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, and many you know that African countries. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I, I understand what what you're saying, but but my problem is um, that I find that my children. Um, I'm married to Rasika, who is a Buddhist, and I'm a Christian. My children are neither Buddhists nor Christians, and they are married to Hindus. And then they are, uh, I, I wonder what their children will believe in, whether they'll become spiritual in, in what, in the sense that you, uh, you are talking about and abandon those basic religions in their life. That is a worry that I have. Yeah, actually, I didn't, uh, I mean, this is another area, I know, people like Jose Casanova and Grace Dave, you know, sociologists have emphasized, no? Uh, uh, next level of spirituality. Now, they will not be confined to one brand. Uh, and now that now actually now uh, in the Western world, more than in our countries like you now in uh, America, Australia, you have an issue because they wanted to redeem the rational man from emotional man. But now they have realized now that you can't do that. Therefore, uh, Casanova would say new religions, I mean, old religions are getting new life. They will have entirely different spirituality. I mean, no, it's yet to come. We don't know what it is. <laughs> I know it's a struggle for you, you know, that no, we are getting old. You may be, I mean, no, I'm also now, I mean, 60 now. <laughs> you see, yeah. now, it may be a struggle for us. I think if you have a deeper uh, reflection and understanding, you will see as another level of spirituality. Now, if you take any religion, no, they have different levels of spirituality, no? Now that, now Buddha had a, no, we a different level of spirituality from Hinduism, no? Hindus found it very difficult to understand. No, that's why uh, Buddhism disappeared from India because no, they didn't understand. Uh, now uh, your people, your children will, or your children's children, grandchildren will have a different level of spirituality. Uh, it can be a very secular spirituality. It may not be a very institutionalized spirituality, uh, but uh, it's yet to come. Uh, I mean, no, uh, old religions are dying, and no new are yet to be born. That's what they. <laughs> Uh, very painful process. Very painful process. I agree. Yeah. Thank you. Thank but, you. Uh, that's a reality. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. This is why Bishop I promote the multiple path theory rather than the unitary path theory. And for me, the multiple path theory is, is helpful, harmonious. Yeah, is the moral of uh, side and spiritual side. But if you belong to the only side, only path theory, you are in trouble. Let me give another example. You are in a room, okay, full of people. The room is, uh, is society. In the room, there are people wearing all kinds of costumes. And there are men, women, short, tall, all that. Now, in one room, they are all happy because they recognize a person under the clothing and not the clothes, right? In another room... You're only happy if you have a Manchester United jersey. Oh, he's one of us. Others are all rubbish, you know. And make it, make it even more complicated. In the room, there's, there are several doors. One door says hell. Other one says heaven. And then you are told you can only go through the heaven door if you are a United jersey. So then all the children of, uh, of the people who are United jerseys want their children to be a United jersey because they want to go them to heaven, you see. So this is the danger of... Uh, thinking that you know everything, right? I don't think any human being can know everything. 
most of us belong to religions primarily because you are born into, into the culture and because your parental influence. 99% of people who adopt religion are people who are born into it. Very few have converts. I don't claim to know everything, but I know something. I know that nobody knows everything. But if I have a broad understanding, I believe there are multiple paths that we can tread harmoniously, create a harmonious society, create some happiness for you. That's better than saying that is the only path. We must make sure that they all go on that path. My God, otherwise they go astray. That's dangerous. Anyway, that's my view. I said enough. <laughs> I think I think that philosophy is given in no almost all the religions know that uh, but people have not worked on that now I mean I told you once no uh, uh, disciples of Jesus so no that people healing other people in his name but they rebuked it uh, but Jesus those who are not against us are for us I think when we grasp the you know other person and his ideas and philosophies you deepen your faith I often used to say you no know, like a tree you have to find a place to grow and branch out you grow and branch out and they know that you live in a bigger world, no? Then you you start appreciating other people, and you by doing that you enrich not that your own faith. But just to, just, to just to interrupt you, one of my very good friends who's not here, wonderful sincere man, I really admire him, but he says, Mahendra, your faith is sealed unless you accept Jesus Christ as your savior. You're you're not there. You know, I'm so sorry. You're a nice chap. Well, I have another good friend of mine who's dead now, a very faithful Christian. Who, the best human being I ever met. And she told me, Mahendra, the type of God I believe in will never let you down. You're a good fellow. My, my God is not a person who's going to judge you by whether you have a label saying I accept Jesus or whatnot. So th this is what I'm saying, how people look at it. If you look at it in a very fundamentally sort of way, saying that is the only path, then you are in trouble. Actually, actually, now, uh, uh, I mean, no, unfortunately, you know, uh, he was a sociologist and also theologian called M.M. Thomas in India. He was the governor of Assam and he died. Now, he developed a concept called risking Christ for Christ's sake. Now, even though Jesus did not want to save his life, you know, that he, he, he sacrificed his life to save other people. I mean, no, that is a very selfish thing. You no, know, if you are trying to know that, you no, know, uh, kind of know that uh, grasp Jesus in a selfish manner, that is not Christianity. Because he, he, he said, no, that take this, no, that trouble from me. But he said, no, that the ultimate real, not my will, but your will. No, that ultimately, no, that uh, when you are willing to sacrifice your time, money and energy for other people, no, you know, that they get the liberation. No? But this kind of, no, that uh, the very selfish, inward looking introvert idea is more harmful than helpful. And also it is not a religious idea. This is the whole, no, that issue of identity. Because you want to get more people to your group. So that make it not that bigger and know that say no we are stronger than other people but that's a very selfish idea no which is contrary to christianity i mean not that if somebody wants to accept jesus no that i say all right but uh, even no marriages and no some people find fault with me some people want to say i want to we are become a christian because i want to marry this guy i said no just because you are marrying this girl don't become a christian think about no, it right. indrani has a question indrani i don't know and I'm just, uh, Shihan has uh, been raising the hand first, and then I'll give a chance to Indrani. Okay, thank you, Ron. Oh, okay, uh, thank you, Ron. Uh, yes, when I, when I write about the Sri Lanka's uh, ethnic categories and looking at the population census, I always stop to think when it comes to Moors, because um, I know Moors is the Portuguese word that the, uh, the Portuguese used for Moor Muslims. But then within that category called Muslims, we have Moor Muslims, we've got Arab, people of Arab descent. If you talk of ethnic groups, they are of Arab descent, of Indian descent. And then Malays are even more problematic. And they themselves, at the legislative council days, they didn't want to be represented by a Muslim. They wanted their own person. And that is based on their different language and different culture. So our planners, do you think, uh, uh, is there any plans for making these categories consistent? Because within the Sinhalese and Tamils, there are Christians. I mean, it's not, you cannot say stereotype no. Sinhalese saying he's a Buddhist. No, 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 no. You can't do that because no, that, now that's why now, uh, I mean, majority of the <coughs> Buddhist are Sinhalese, majority of the Hindus are Tamil. But when you get Christians, no, 4% each, no, that uh, they are Sinhala Tamil, no. That's why it's not religious categories. That is also not just for no analysis and explanation. You can't make categories like that. And also, I think uh, uh, 
uh, it is not happening the way it is happening in England and no other Western countries. But here also, where young people are concerned, they have multiple identities. I think in time to come, no, that uh, older generations try to hang on to know, even in my own diocese, no, that uh, most of the people are married to Buddhists. I mean, no, that they come to church and go to temple as well. Now that people have dual identities, no, many people have dual identities and also know that Tamils are married, single is single is married, Tamils. No, I mean, all those things are changing. Uh, that I mean, I don't think you'll be able to harness that kind of thing in time to come, but you must have a, a closer, you know, look at all those concepts now. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's very difficult to know that, uh, categorize in that way. That's why now, now still, no, uh, I mean, I have been, uh, as you notice now that uh, at one stage, the principle of deaf school and all that now, uh, even when you analyze uh, children with learning difficulties or slow learners, now in Sri Lanka, still they categorize. But uh, in England, they do a statement thing. I think statement thing is now that more uh, effective and meaningful than categorizing. Now, in the modern world, I think uh, it is extremely difficult to categorize in that way human behavior. And they know that uh, all these ethnologies categories, so they were changing. Uh, therefore, I think we need you know, that uh, some uh, in-depth studies on those you know, that categorize. Thank you. Is anybody else who wants to ask a question? Because my have, somebody in, Indrani else. was there. Can, can you unmute yourself, Indrani? You are muted. Unmute yourself. Your your. Yeah, press the mute one, unmute. Otherwise, we can't hear you. Uh, Ruan, can you unmute her? Indrani, uh, Indrani Pedrapurle. Indrani? I can't see. Uh... Oh, she has disappeared. She must have pressed the wrong button. Oh, no, she's there. Indrani Anthony. Can you see? Indrani, I'm looking. Yeah. Yeah, she's there. Look at the participants, Indrani, and then unmute her. Let me just get to the gallery. Indrani Anthony Pillay. I still can't see Indrani Anthony Pillay. It's, it's there. Indrani Anthony Pillay, I can see her very clearly. If you go to participants, you might see yeah, I'm going I'm going I'm and then unmute. She has not unmuted, uh, Zohan. Sorry. Yeah. Indrani has forgotten. Forgot to unmute herself. That's why I think Ruan can un unmute her. No, I, I, I have asked her to unmute. Uh, you are not she, no, I can't. Uh, right. I'm asking uh, her to unmute. She Indrani, can't. can you get your technical expert who's behind you to unmute you? Ah, there you are. Yeah, you can unmute her. Come on. <laughs> That's uh, in. Indrani's daughter. You, you can unmute her. Come on. Oh dear. Okay, I mean, okay, there, you <laughs> oh, there you are. Right. Okay. Now you can talk. Okay. Talk now. Hello. Good afternoon. I am Indrani yeah, and yeah. I'm a Christian, but I'm not talking as a Christian. I'm saying just observing and uh, registering all the things you have been saying, which is very interesting. I think religion is a personal thing and it's a spiritual thing and it is a, religion, a re relational thing. So it doesn't matter whether you are a Buddhist, Christian, Hindu or whatever else. Um, when, you, when you talk about it, of the children in England especially, now my grandchildren are Christians and we are all Christians. That's because we were born into a Christian family. And also we are inspired by the culture and by the uh, families that we, we belong to in our practice of, of uh, religion. So what I see in my grandchildren, what's, what they are doing now is, as, as somebody said, it's not anymore Christianity, it is religious studies. And the religious studies involves a lot of philosophical discussions and question and answers. And by that, many of the Christians are becoming atheists. And that's another group which is quite in, involved and very problematic for Christians or anyone. Because atheists is a very highly intellectual 
philosophical uh, agenda. And so we can't anymore talk about Christianity or Buddhism or Hinduism. It's what is being used in the uh, schools or encouraged is free thinking and question and answers, which involves ethnicity, cultural things, and also any other familial things. So I, I think when, when we say we want a clarity about religion, it's important actually to be more philosophical than being directional. As uh, Mahendra said, um, it's much more one thing welcoming and also it gives a lot of work for your brain. And in the future with the artificial intelligence coming in, it's going to be all different. So you have to think in what, how the future is looking. And looking at that, it is how, how to direct the children into belonging and encouraging relational things so that they can uh, respect and follow whatever principles that the parents are giving. Because we are going to be very bound by uh, computers and intelligence. So artificial in intelligence is going to overrule us in the next 10 years. By 2030, you wouldn't talk about these things. That's my stand. Because I, yeah, I, thank I, you, yeah. I, I, I used to believe in being a strong Christian and doing things. And what I see is different because what is seeing is going to be the thing that's going to act in the future. Yeah, thank you. I think uh, let me give a kind of you no know, response to you know that your ideas. I mean, it's not a question. Uh, now, I think uh, Rwanda has already put, I think what they mean is agnostics more than atheists. Yeah, that's true. I mean, no, and also uh, I used to call them you know, that uh, evangelical, you no, know, that agnostic. <laughs> they, they want all the others to be agnostic, no? Like evangelical Christians and evangelical Buddhists and all that, no? As uh, the other uh, brother was telling, no, that they want to convert everybody to Christianity, Buddhism and all that. Yeah, but uh, uh, I, I think, no, that uh, she said uh, uh, spiritual and no, relational, but at the same time, when you say religion is personal, yes, I think that is more meaningful in Western countries than in, no, that Asian and African countries. Because, no, that should... in our part of the world, for xenophobia and also you strengthen you know, that your group by doing that. Therefore, you know that uh, it's very hard to say you know, that it's creative or destructive. You know that even, even in countries like England, uh, if you go to churches, you know, very often you know, that they may not come to church, but still they want the weaker, the church and the pub. So those are binding factors. Now religions have become binding factors. Therefore, when you say religion is very personal, yes and no. Yes, you can have a religion as a personal, not that entity, but at the same time, religions bring people together, or ethnicities bring people together, languages bring people together, professions bring people together. That is not, not just personal, but in the context of the community, where individuals are important in the context of the community, where community is important in the context of the individual. Uh, therefore, know that uh, now I always say get the breeze, but they don't get blown off. Uh, now, I mean, we shouldn't uh, do the mistake that, no, that uh, they did in the no, mid-19th century uh, by telling, no, that you have to save the rational man from the emotional man. Always people have emotions, no, that people have a lot of things, no, which are unexplainable. When, no, you, you have to explain, no, unexplainable, you look for some higher power. It may be uh, Nirvana or Buddha or Dhamma or Jesus or anybody, but that, oh, that mystery should be kept. That is what religions have been doing, doing now that if you analyze sociologically and no, philosophically and anthropologically. Therefore, I think now that if you try to erase that now that you become vulnerable. Therefore, you need to keep that aspect of mystery now that for people to grasp because we can't grasp everything. We are, we are finite beings. Now we are here for a very short period of time. You may talk about being, uh, artificial intelligence. Yes, good. But artificial intelligence will not uh, save you or not that now make you a better person. Yeah, you will. You will. 
uh, you will learn things, no, you will grasp things, no, that you will advance the human sciences. But that will create more problems than solutions. Then not to, to uh, settle those problems, you will go into another level. Now that's why when they uh, removed no religions, no, that uh, Lord of the Ring and no, that Harry Potter became very important. J.K. Rowling no, could earn millions because of that. Because no, that she was able to know that uh, address that vacuum created no, by uh, replacing the emotional side. So okay. people need that kind of awe. I mean, no, these are vicious circles. Yeah, but I think we need to uh, think in those lines as well. I agree with you. Hope is very important. Hope exactly. brings people together, exactly. whether it's black, white, sweet, whatever. Yes. So yes. I agree with you. I agree with the, mem 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 the things that you were telling. But what I'm saying is, but our children are being led away. And that is very sad. And as a Sri Lankan, family-oriented woman, I find it very hard that in the future, we won't have children who be talking about Buddhism or Christianity or uh, Hinduism or Muslimism. Um, they'll be talking something different, like Elon Rusk is doing now. So it's a frightening, it's a frightening world in front. Uh, thank you very much. Are there any other questions? Um, I can't see anybody. Uh, can I just ask a very controversial question um, without um, putting in trouble? Uh, we, we had discussions in the past about Buddhist priests getting involved in politics. And now we are seeing a little bit of uh, Cardinal Malcolm Ranjit getting involved in, you know, more current politics. Um, what is your view in the Christian priests uh, getting involved or making public statements about politics? Have you got a personal opinion? Be a bit careful about what you say, yes, right? Thank you. No, 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 no. I'm very open on that. Actually, now, I mean, from my own faith, uh, we have what is called prophetic ministry. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, personally, I think even Cardinal, we don't get involved in party politics like Buddhism, but we get involved in politics because policy city. City matters are part of the religion. Actually, we are committed to know that, no, speak for people. I mean, we keep on no issuing statements, not only issuing statements, we even challenge the politicians. We have a right to do and know that that is given in our religion. When, no, now, for instance, uh, even I asked the uh, president to ask forgiveness when they carried the old women and no Buddhist monks, know that uh, when they were having a uh, no protest and all that. No, I mean, I'm not the first person to do that. Bishop Lakshman, Lakdas, all this, that Bishop Kenneth, no. But um, I always say not to get involved in party politics. But we have a responsibility to get involved in the matters of the city. Because religion is connected to know that the city and city is connected because we are in the city. And even know that Cardinal has every right to speak for his own people. He is not getting involved in UMP politics. So they try to drag you in. You know that uh, to say that he is supporting my party and all that. No? And we should be careful on that. But I think uh, uh, I always distinguish party politics from politics. So Jesus was involved in politics. He said, no, that the Herod, no, go and tell that fox. He said, you are like white and sepulcher. Inside, no, you get, no, all the, no, that uh, rotten bones and, no. I mean, uh, uh, that is part of, no, that every religion. But uh, getting into one political party, uh, I think, no, is uh, more destructive than creative because they know that you have people for all the parties, no, that inside your religion. Therefore, I think uh, we have to speak of people and their issues and know that we have to work for their liberation and also as Christians from the Christian perspective, you have prophetic ministry. Thank you for that. Uh, Ajna, got a question? Uh, I'm sorry to be asking so many questions, Ron um, uh, Father. Um, now, I can I direct back to your, um, your research? Um, in this audience, there aren't any Sri Lankan Muslims participating. And we find that the Christians and Buddhists are, are open to discussing their own uh, religion. So in your deep study of the Sri Lankan uh, uh, immigrants, did you interact with the Sri Lankan Muslim population as well? 
I did up to a certain extent because you now that my point of departure was you not know, single Buddhist and Christian, but I could see you know their participation in Buddhist temple, Christian churches. I mean, ethical side they get involved, you not know, that they get involved in you not know, that all the practical things. When it comes to religion and you not know, doctrinal things, you no, know, they are I mean, you no, know, not very open in that way. What you say is true, even in Sri Lanka, you no, know, that yeah. But now things are uh, things are changing you now recently. I was with number of Muslims now that now uh, they try to at least they make an effort to discuss, but still they are not ready for that because they haven't done that. They have been involved in business, no? I mean, they say, oh, we also have Adam and Eve, all that kind of thing they say, but they don't go into deeper philosophy because the, the, they have a basic uh, dilemma because now they are, they are concerned religion and ethnicity are intertwined. No? Now, Jews also have a similar now that approach. Uh, they are for know that they find it difficult and also know this kind of dialogue is new to them. So they haven't done it. Uh, where practical things are concerned, business is concerned, they are good friends. They are friendly with us. But uh, as you rightly said, no, they don't get involved in no, that uh, uh, that kind of dialogue. But we do. We, we have dialogue with them. We do, but not uh, the way we are doing that with Hindus and no Christians and Buddhists. Right. I mean, as a as a group, a uh, religious group, uh, we find that they are very sort of insular and in their outlooks as well as in their so marriages and so on, they, they are inward looking and they are uh, reluctant or they don't really engage in dialogue as we do in the, in the other religions. Bishop Kirti, uh, one word that kept recurring in your talk was about identity, and I completely agree with you because uh, if we if we go back and look at it in biological terms, uh, all herds, after all, the animals, <laughs> believe it or not, uh, we we have a sense of identity, and one of the most important things about identity is safety. If you look around and you see people like you, then when I say like me to resemble you, you feel safe the moment you see something outside you, like a lion who's growling at you, you associate that with danger. But once you get used to safety, to look at each other, and then you want to stand out. So you put lipstick, you put hairstyles, you have different ways of dressing and so on, because you want to look unique. And moment you begin to divide like that, then issues arise. So in many societies where people are very similar, then they are very happy. But the moment you see somebody starting something new, something different, you feel threatened again. And I think this is my personal view. One of the problems with the Muslim uh, Islamic religion is not that they are bad, but they are very much unitary path minded. Our path is the only path. Anybody who doesn't tread that is going outside. And moment you believe that you're in trouble, I keep saying that, but moment you believe that your path is the only path and all the others are heathens going astray, you're in trouble because that will promote things like suicide bombing. It will promote things like forceful uh, conversion. This will uh, promote things like bribing people to come to religion, all that, because they do it with what they call good intention. So that is my theme right along about religion is for heaven's sake, don't believe that your path is the only path, is the only correct path. It's not, religion is not a religion of a theory of everything. That is any of my personal belief. No, actually that's why, you know, even uh, now January we think of unity. You know, I always emphasize unity is not uniformity. Because now that even now in Christianity, you know, I mean, most of the religions have concept of Trinity. We believe in you no know, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now, Father is the ultimate reality. Son who became you no know, that I mean manifestation of that reality, and you know that Holy Spirit we say the sustainer, the Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha, and then the Shula, you no, know, the you get that. You no, know, because you now that you had the ultimate reality, manifestation, and the continuation. You get that those philosophical concepts in every religion. That's why we need to distinguish unifo uniformity from unity. You now, when you say unity. First of all, you accept your diversity and then know that you believe that you depend on each other, interdependence. Humans know that we have common dependence. I think we need to grasp those three things, no? that we are different, diverse, and then know we have interdependence. We depend on each other, like the human body, parts of the body. No? 
you know that you now we have hands and legs and all they are different in sizes shapes and functions but they are different but they know part of the body and also know that uh, the body is you know that uh, the kind of concept that brings people together uh, when you go for uniformity you go into a kind of a uniform like thing then you think now what you think is right and all the others are wrong but i think no that is not a very religious or philosophical concept because no religion seven emphasize that because that is not the real that is not the truth yeah we need to know that work on that but when it comes to identity only you get this issue because you try to strengthen your identity by rejecting other people so uh, mm-hmm. this is the issue thank you very much you are welcome yeah. any other any other questions from the audience chaya do you have any opinions jehan is waiting sorry who's who's hands up i can't see jehan is waiting Asha, Asha, right. Yeah, I just wanted to say about the Muslims. Um, yes, one of my friends, she's in Australia, just after the PhD, and she has written a, a paper about this uh, Muslims, you know, the openness, how within the reconciliation program, trying to promote inter-ethnic understanding. And this lady in Kandy lived opposite a mosque all her life. She'd never been to the mosque. And the moment she went in, she realized that they weren't that different after all. So I think are there any plans like that in the rest of the country I mean I think it's we coming to the question of class as well because among the Kalambu town urban period the people there is this more of an understanding you know yeah yeah no actually uh, now uh, in schools now we have been taking them to know other places of worship you know other cultural places we have been encouraging that and know that many uh, private schools they do you know in england they do that know that uh, to expose them to other religions other food other cultures no i mean we have been involved in that when we lived in england for five years we have been involved in that and know that how to expose them even not to the sign language not only religion other realities no and you expand your boundaries now as you as you rightly said now i remember i, I have worked in 15 different places in sri lanka in badul mathur everywhere i had interest groups i used to take all the monks and lepers and all that no they used to tell me So father we thought no we can't come to your church i said no it's okay but you can come to our church at any time by doing that you understand the other you know so very often now you have what i call xenophobia you are frightened of the other but once you associate now in singala there's a saying no yaka aspre kala belo me etchara kalu na and now that very often now we have that xenophobia then we name it no i mean no racism and all that kind of thing i think the main problem is xenophobia you are frightened of the other who are not in your group but if you expand your boundaries you accommodate them and then you try to understand them better i told you about tamil language i remember now when i offered myself to become a clergy person when i went for the training now when i heard tamil now it was very irritating and no i mean no i didn't tell anybody i mean no then no you hate it as singhali but now now i have no study tamil even i can say prayers in tamil i'm not very fluent in tamil and no at one stage i was bishop deputy for tamil areas like trinko batik to and all that and then i started to study and learn in center one tamil person donated a house for that no now in my uh, extreme singhala villages no not just religious groups they have been going there for exposures and then the way they treat these people because of me you know their ideas are going to change they say now that this singhala person had to come and start this study and learn in center and no they he loved us so much no and no they know they love the singhala people also i mean they are not uh, only christians no from all the religious background that interaction is necessary so that we understand the other better uh, in countries like sri lanka very often that doesn't happen i think that should be encouraged now that uh, in schools and now even now at one stage i remember uh, we went on trips now from the buddhist dham parcel and now that uh, christian dham parcel common common now that uh, trips uh, to a important place then know that uh, you sort of know that encourage the harmony and know that understanding others better but uh, often people are frightened of that kind of experience thank you ajay well um from my last comment about um, the the religious groups uh, i find that the concept of god in um, the hindu uh, particularly the indian hindu population is a very uh, open stance uh, i mean they have their in their religion 550 million uh, um, named gods and so many million other unknown gods so another extra god 
e is uh, an easy concept for them to embrace. So uh, I, I find that you, most uh, Hindus will have a, a cross and a, and a Virgin Mary and, and so on in their shrines. Um, whereas it, that is a no-no uh, generally for Buddhists or Christians. We would like to keep our own gods uh, in our shrines. I, I just a comment. Yeah, actually, uh, now, uh, I mean, I have studied some studies of Hinduism as well. I have been teaching now that compared uh, to religions, now they have a Sanskrit sloka called Ekam Sat Vibra Bahutta Vadanti Sarvadeva Namaskara Keshavam Pratigachati, which means now, although described as many, one which is, all the adorations will fall into that which is. Because they have a, uh, now, a lot of people think, no, Hindus believe in many gods. No, they say all, all are rays of no, the ultimate reality, Dhamma. Uh, it comes up vibra, you know, that although described as many, you know, this is what they believe. I think uh, uh, that concept is there in many religions, but we don't harness that. Now, in my diocese, that has been harnessed in a place called Deva Sarna Rami. You now, there's a small chapel, you know, that uh, yeah, we have you know, that in our worship, you know, uh, the, the readings from other scripture, that kind of thing. But this is not you know, that kind of, you now a lot of people, Christians and you know, Buddhists think, if you do that, you are diluting your religion, very especially Muslims think like that. No, it is not dilution. You know, that uh, you deepen your faith by doing that. That's why I say, like a tree, you have to find a place to grow and branch out. I mean, if you are growing, you have to branch out. Now, otherwise, you can't grow. And know that uh, that openness is not there, as you said. Know that uh, now Muslims find it very difficult. Then Buddhists know that Christians also find it you know, up to a certain extent. But Buddhists are more open in that way, although there are issues. But Hindus are because Hinduism doesn't have a kind of one. You know that. Uh, leader or one or that uh, kind of know that person to highlight and and it is so natural to the soil of india therefore no they can absorb all that they have this krama uh, mukti jivan mukti that kind of thing yeah but i think uh, all our religions have uh, that capacity at least up to a certain extent we have to harness that capacity to bring people together okay uh, let me uh, probably ask uh, one more question you, um, well, most religions have two aspects. One is the one is the intellectual appeal aspect, and the other one is the belief aspect. The popular, popular, um, yeah. Yeah. So I think science also have both aspects. Uh, now you, at the start of uh, this talk, you just dismiss that science might be um, replacing religion. But may I just ask you once again, do you not think that in the future, science will take up, take an upper hand and be like another religion, knowing that there is a strong belief element in science as well, although it changes all the time? Yeah, that has been happening throughout the ages, Ruan. Because now, if you take all the you know that uh, modern scientists were priests, no, like no, they do emphasize that. I mean, no, they even even, even know that uh, the 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 academic background of uh, uh, Charles Darwin is theology. He studied theology. If you get Mendel and all these people, no, they came from that kind of background. Modern science was born in the you know, monasteries. I mean, no, you take Oxford, Cambridge, all monasteries, no, still the terms, no, like, no, chaplain and vice chancellor, sabbatical, all Christian terms. Now, science is a religion, actually, where yeah, I'm concerned. Another form of religion, science is a religion, and also, no, that they, they do a test and, no, that come to a conclusion, no, and all those things are changing, no. Uh, they, they tried to show, no, that you had, actually, sci what science did was, they said you should be more rational than religion. But now they are realizing by becoming, no, uh, unnecessarily rational, you can't solve issues. Is the problem no now you can analyze the issue you no know, that but you can't solve it no? until you go to that level no that's why you know that I learned it from a Roman Catholic uh, philosopher you no know, that called Father Michael Rod who was shot in Buddha I, I studied and he used to give a fine example to the sign of the cross three H's head heart and hands you see you know that uh, science talk about head religions talk about heart actually you know the real science and real religion is a combination of head and heart. Now, if you put head and heart into action, you become meaningful. If you just put head knowledge into action, no heart into action, you become extremist. No? But it should be a combination of no three H's. In single also, I have created no three hers. Kisa, Hada, Hasta. Head, heart and hand. I think that should that combination should be maintained in both religion and science. Otherwise, you become irrelevant. Shihan? 
Okay. Uh, yes, I wondered about the uh, Ethiopian Christians um, church. Yeah. Um, is there anything concrete that we know about? We know Ethiopians, so they are in Mantei trading. Yeah. And uh, yeah. is there any even earlier than yeah, the Ethiopian, Ethiopian Christianity go back to now very ancient times from Judaism. And know that uh, now, uh, if I talk about a little bit of Christian history, uh, when they have the Holy, I mean, before Holy Roman Empire, up to 325 AD, Christians are persecuted. No? Therefore, they couldn't build churches no, that in the Roman Empire until now the Constantine became a Christian with the Edict of Milan in 325. I mean, until such time, no, that the beginning of the fourth century, churches grew up in Ethiopia, in Egypt, and those places. Those were the you know, that original centers of you know, Christianity because you know, they had uh, uh, kind of a relative freedom in those areas because Romans couldn't control those areas. You know? And also they have had a lot of you know, strong influence on uh, uh, Judaism. They have you no know, Coptic Christians, Jacobites, and you no know, Armenians, all those Christians. We don't hear much about those people. Of course, I, I have been exposed and you know, Anglican churches in all those countries. Uh, they have their lot of cultural beliefs that know that uh, no, religion is a kind of a Christianity is a binding factor for them. No, it's kind of a cultural thing for them, no Christianity. But they know that with uh, the extreme Muslim threats, no, they are having a lot of persecution in those countries. Uh, I mean, that's a very you no know, deep rooted cultural no, that uh, philosophy where Christianity is concerned for them. So for Sri Lanka, do we take the beginning as the Portuguese a church? What about St. Thomas? I no, mean... no, no, no. Actually, no, Sri Lanka, now if you take the world map, you get no, three main civilizations, no, Chinese and then no, Mesopotamian and Indian. No. All these cultures have been going to. Now, for instance, this cross no, that was unearthed, uh, this shape was unearthed, no, engraved on a stone, no, on a story. And Persians have had the influence here. Even before the time of Jesus, no, that uh, a lot of Jews have lived here. And even Jesus' domestic language, Aramaic was spoken in India and Sri Lanka through the Silk Route, but not with the royal patronage. Christian influence has been here and all that. I mean, Jewish influence has been here. And now with them, even they have had Christians and all that, traders. And because Sri Lanka, because of the you know, cultural, I mean, you know, geographical locations, all the cultures have been going to Sri Lanka. Uh, but with Portuguese, no, that to get the colonial Christianity. But the Christian influence has been here and all that, beyond doubt before that. Yeah but not established, not uh, patronized by uh, the king. All right, thank you. Mahendra? Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, just to uh, announce that for people who are interested, uh, 22nd of May, uh, Professor Mahesh Nirmalan will be talking about is Hinduism a religion or a philosophy? Now, Nirmalan is a, is a, is a physician, is a doctor, but he has a very deep interest in Hinduism and knowledge. So I think it'll be worth listening. And uh, the final one, this is definitely my final observation to say that we must never forget that when people adopt religions, uh, there are all kinds of motives. Some uh, adopt it for power, other for, for, for influence, others for a feeling of safety about what happens after death, others uh, for a sense of belonging. And there are a few who after intense deliberation study of various philosophies, in the past, present, religions, find that that's the best explanation that provides for them as a personal thing about what life means and what is, you know, what it really means, a, a, a large way. If you forget the pin drop which you are in the universe and, you know, and become an expanded human being, then for some, religion proves the way of finding an explanation. That's a small proportion, I would say. Majority are there for sense of belonging, for power, for influence, for ethnic reasons, all kinds of wrong reasons. That is that is why, you know, if you look at a true Buddhist, I mean, he, he should be the most emancipated, lovely person on earth. Most tolerant. True Christian should be that. Correct, correct. I agree with you. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome, yeah. Right. I think we've spent two and a half hours with you, um, Reverend I Kirti. enjoyed, yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, so at this moment, may I ask everybody to unmute yourself and put on your uh, videos as well. And I'll put it into the gallery view so that I could see everybody. Reverend Keithy, thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. 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 Um, I can hear some uh, disturbance. Good, good. disturbance. <laughs>
Unable to access deliverance. That's always showing the idea. Always showing the idea. Spending your time with us and enlighten us and with your knowledge. And I think to it as a group. As a group. As a group. Thank you. Thank you. You are very welcome. Yeah. Thank you for all your, you know, that uh, important and enriching questions. Enriching questions, yeah.